<laughs> the raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean the Raven's heir? Shh, turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now. We just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! Hands up! I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, but my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. Nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old Raven. Two days ago, 
A precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finally honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late 50s. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're guarding something. Oh, really? And what might it be? Could it possibly be a jewel that's making a long and perilous journey? You're guessing. You can't possibly know what's inside the safe. But if that were the case... Then I'd ask you why the train wasn't crawling with police. You don't want to arouse attention? If you don't. But why not? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country. And I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm, clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. All right. Pills for my heart. I'm supposed to take one if I have trouble. My daughter insisted that I take them with me. She was strongly against this little adventure, but I wasn't about to change my mind. 
The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. For one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. If I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No. Orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money. Or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh! Pardon me! No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr... Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have, although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right, just wait here. 
You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then close the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen! When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform! James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... <laughs> It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partu is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... <laughs> I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No, we are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant, am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. 
But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent. But she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt. And a difficult bus, from what they say. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? The little boy, Matt, he's your son? Oh, yes. <gasps> Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So? Nothing out of the ordinary. No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Extraordinary woman, talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup and small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Hmm. When I scratch the pencil's lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm. Where could he be? A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become. Ah, 
Mr. Zona. <laughs> right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No, just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Le Grand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, you know, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen of Crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. Let's see if there's any news. Blah, 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 blah. Eye of the Sphinx. One of two priceless jewels. Extraordinary pure ruby. 2000 BC, etc., etc. Old news. And here, shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion. Not really anything new. One of the two eyes of the Sphinx, a ruby that's nearly 4,000 years old, was stolen from the British Museum. The burglar was surprised, but managed to escape with his loot without being recognized. That's the official story. But it says nothing about Legrand and the second eye. Lunas Drops, the calming herbal liqueur for women. A glass a day, it relaxes the nerves, 
and maintains domestic tranquility. Luna's drops, if you don't want to bother your husband. <laughs> hmm, a story about the upcoming Oscars and Cleopatra's chances of winning. An incredible feat. They build the largest movie set of all time in Rome. And because of the main actress's many illnesses, several changes of director and months of delays, cost shot to over $40 million. The most expensive movie ever made. A record never to be broken. John Surtees won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960, making him the only man in motorsports to win World Championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm, not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast, too much exhaust. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Hello? Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce... Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? <laughs> someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner. Be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. Constable Robert Oliver. Is it possible that I read your name in the newspaper? Ah, could be, sir. Could very well be. Robert was there when the first Eye of the Sphinx was stolen. Why were you in the museum? Did you spot something from outside? Well, sir, I noticed that a door was ajar, which was suspicious, and it was my duty to investigate, sir. Scotland Yard gave him a commendation and assigned him to me as a liaison. A great honor, sir. Baroness von Trebitz told me that she's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz? Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter? Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new Raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I'll go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. 
A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of Legrand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Hmm. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Huh? Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. Oh, a constable? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong, fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... He's gone. Ah. I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. I think it's uncomfortable for her when I talk to her in front of Lady Westmacott. She seems to take it as an inappropriate distraction from her work, although she's just knitting. Taking up a craft like that is typical of women who were told as little girls that idleness is a sin. Hello, Matt. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. Should... Should I ask for an autograph? That will be quite unprofessional. But on the other hand... I won't eat any just now. It would be rather embarrassing if I met the ground and wasn't able to open my mouth because it's been stuck shut or because I lost some teeth. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? 
I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the ladies' house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him. And hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then mom fought with him. And he left. I was seven. Oh. And uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no. We'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him. Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps, but I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. The violin case looks pretty old. But that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. I doubt the violinist will let me have a look in his case. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought... Uh... Because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very. And also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Have a good trip. Thank you. With Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one, go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? 
Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Uh, Lady Westmacott. Yes? I, uh, was wondering if you might... Sign your book, Constable Zelna? If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. You are welcome. Thank you so very much. For brave Constable Anton Jakob Zeller, whose time shall surely come, Clarissa Westmacott, DBE. And suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Whoops, that was easier than expected. Hmm, batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm, too small for the door, but it might still be useful. Key to a padlock, I'm sure of that. It's not the first time I've held one. That's it. There we go, this should help. My grandfather was a blacksmith. When I was a child, I used to play with tongs and hammers in his workshop. My mother never cared for that. She was always worried about my little fingers. But I never hurt myself seriously. I'm quite clever with tools. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe. Or maybe not. 
If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Wow, you have a very nice fountain pen. Privacy. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. Hmm. No, nothing interesting. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? What are you doing? I'm trying to make what I suspect are fingerprints visible. <laughs> and? Found anything? Unfortunately, no. There are only a couple of fingerprints on the window. It was probably clean before departure, but the prints I can see look like glove marks. Well, wouldn't you expect that? What professional burglar wouldn't wear gloves? Which makes me wonder what a professional burglar would hope to find in your compartment. I don't have anything to say to that. I thought as much. It was worth a try. I can only make out faint traces. Whoever was in this compartment was wearing gloves. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Tell me now. The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. Hmm. What do you suggest? I... I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If he's a thief, he'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I can insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me, and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, this is something I have to attend to on my own. It would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kidding. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff. But your idea about distracting him is good all the same. So long. So longer. Would you be so kind as to close the window? No, I'd like some fresh air. But I don't want to catch a cold. I'm sorry, my fellow. The tip of the toothpick is stuck between the window and the runner. What are you doing? Didn't I make myself clear? The window stays closed. Well, there's not what you expect to find in a violin case. An old one, but probably still fully functional. I don't know anything about violins. It may very well be a very expensive violin, or not. Hey, what are you doing there? I was taking your case for safekeeping, since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Aha, uh -huh, for sure. 
And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I'll report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Should I take a look inside? It would be a breach of trust. On the other hand, there might be important clues to be found. And here? A picture. Hmm. A family in a garden. From the light clothing of the people in the picture and the strong shadows, I'd say the picture was taken on a sunny day. Tough to read. It's old-fashioned German. I learned it in school, but I'm a bit out of practice. I've been writing with the Latin-style script for ten years now, like everyone else. Hmm. Seems like it says, For my dear little sister, Meta, Summer in Mazuria, 1926. The Baroness must have been a young woman in 1926. She probably spent the summer holidays with her family there. Pleasant memories carried in a picture, but it's none of my business. I should give the Baroness a property back. Oh, Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. Oh, wonderbar. Tremendous work, Inspector. Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? <laughs> Do you know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Exhibition? What exhibition? The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention, and that the exhibition will still be a great success. Oh, perhaps. But we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department at the British Museum, he has to be. The whole burglary thing really upset him. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave of you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. Ha! Yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, Mr. Zellner. I've been wondering why you're wearing gloves. Are your hands really so sensitive? Or are you cold? Nah, well... It's an old habit. As a doctor, one is so conscious of all the pathogens, bacteria, and viruses that surround us. Though, of course, perhaps I do tend to be a bit too cautious. I know exactly what you mean. As a policeman, I sense subterfuge and lies everywhere. 
Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. What? Someone broke off the radio's antenna. This could be a long trip to Istanbul. Professor Lucien. Door is open. How can I help you, Constable Zellner? I believe you and the inspector do know each other. Well, what makes you think that? It seems like the two of you are running a haulage company specializing in safes. I, I won't comment on that. It's a matter of international importance. Tell me, Professor. Would you happen to have a key in your briefcase? Uh, and if so, would it still happen to be there? Then all would be as it should. That's what we hope, at least. All the same, it would have been a simple matter for a thief to make an impression of it. Right, Professor? Oh. And the break-in? It wasn't an issue for you, even though you're the head of the department where it occurred? All right. The burglary was most upsetting. And shocking. And I didn't know what to do, okay? And you couldn't just tell me that. The fewer people who know about it, the better. I can't trust anyone. You're not only going to Venice, are you? Could it be that your journey will continue? All the way to Egypt, perhaps? I'm on your side. But the more you lie to me, the more difficult you make my job. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Matt, the violinist really did steal the purse. Well observed. I knew it! I bet he's got more stuff planned. I'll stay here and keep an eye on him secretly, okay? Sounds like a plan. The butler, this James, seems to have escaped the Baroness. Good day to you, sir. Can I be of any assistance, sir? I wanted to ask you a few questions. Where did you and the Baroness board the train? In Paris, sir. The Baroness was there on behalf of a charity that she supported for many years. So you weren't in London when they broke into the British Museum? We may have been, actually. We left for Dover bright and early the morning after the burglary. But it was in Paris when we first heard of it. The morning paper in London didn't mention the unfortunate event, sir. And just two days later, you're on a train bound for Switzerland. The Baroness certainly gets around. Indeed, sir. We are practically always on the go. What can you tell me about the Baroness? Nothing, sir. A butler does not tattle. If you'll pardon a rather odd question, are you really named James? That would be a lucky coincidence in your line of work. My name, sir, is Clive Alfred Inch. Your second name is Alfred, yet the Baroness calls you James. Madam considers James to be the only forename suited to a butler, sir. Isn't butler an odd choice of career? Butler? Many would say it's a strange job. It is true that I am one of a dying breed, sir. The war claimed a generation of butlers. 
Have you been to war as well? Indeed, sir. I was a groom for a cavalry officer. When you British talk about war, one is never sure which war you mean. It seems the situation hasn't changed much since the Thirty Years' War, has it? Shrapnel from a bomb dropped by a Fokker would not have wounded me in the Thirty Years' War, sir. No, of course not. Goodbye, James. Or Alfred. Professor Lucien. Door is open. How can I help you, Constable Zelda? I'd like to have a look around the compartment. Oh, uh, of course. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should... What? The light's gone out! Flashlights! Ah! Get off me! There, sir! An envelope! My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's... it's a... Away with it! Take cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde. Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car. You understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. The inspector's trap failed. The thief must have got wind of it. Mm, worse than that, he turned the tables. To win a game of cat and mouse, you have to know who is the cat and who is the mouse.
The tunnel may very well have collapsed. It's difficult to see much because of the darkness and dust, but something certainly crushed the rear of the freight car. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. The other passengers escaped from the train I can see their silhouettes in the light of the fire. If I don't hurry up and uncouple the freight car, they'll suffocate. Champagne, the finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs, enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Hmm, high-proof rum. Could be useful. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. Pardon me, I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion did anyone leave the seat for example i was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded thank god otherwise i would have been caught by the blast as well you certainly were lucky perhaps i was what happened over there the inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded if inspector legrand says so it must be so right I have been to war, and this was no minor explosion. I rather doubt that the freight car was packed to the roof with gas canisters. The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor? Can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. Warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor, that's understandable. I noticed the extinguisher earlier doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. Uh, 
All right, let's go. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. That should do it. Alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. Just as I expected, the alcohol burns with an almost invisible flame. The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light source. The flame is certainly bigger and hotter than a match, but even so, the curtain would probably just smolder. It's taking too long. Time is running out. The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light source. That should do it. Can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. Alcohol on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. The 
The alcohol on the curtains will burn just as dimly as in the bowl. It's no good. Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. The temperature at the tip of the flames from the alcohol should be high enough to set fire to the oil and grease on the curtain, and thus the curtain as well. But if it works, I better not be holding it in my bare hands. I'm the god of fire. That's better now. Incredibly basic mechanism. The kind that lasts forever. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Aha! I can uncouple it with this lever. Okay. Good. The coupling isn't under tension anymore. I should be able to uncouple it now. <clears throat> there we go. Time to get out of here. Listen, everybody! Listen! <coughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's cab myself and released the brake. <coughs> All right. Good job. You too. Listen, please! Matty! Where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madame. I'm sure... <coughs> Matt, where are you? Oh. Matt, are you there? Nothing. Jumping off is not an option. We're going much too fast. I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady Westmacott's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha! Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Bah. Come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man. What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? If there's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything, then I need a pistol too. Makes sense. 
What about this man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? Hmm. Good idea. You stay put. Matt? Look. Thanks. Cover me, okay? No problem. Jumping off is not an option. We're going much too fast. The engine and the coal tender are burning stronger and harder. The airflow is feeding the flames. I have to decouple the wagons immediately. Sooner or later, the engine will be blown apart. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. What have you got yourself into? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here, on an out-of-control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'd be doomed without you. What are you waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. The tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. A large, soft towel, very comfortable. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. It's soaking up the cold water. is for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. You can hardly see out of the window because of the smoke. I don't know how much coal is burning on the tender up there, but it must be tons. I can't do anything about the fire. makes things extremely complicated. How can I stop the train? If the emergency brake doesn't work, I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! Locked. The handle is already too hot to touch. The handle is already too hot to touch. The handle is already too hot to touch.
locked. The handle is already too hot to touch. Okay, we'll do it the hard way. It looks just like the one on the freight car. That means that first I have to turn that thing there. That keeps it under tension. Ugh. It's not working. Even if I could reach the lever with my hands, I wouldn't have the strength to move it. Should do the trick. The coupling won't release because it's under too much tension. Just smoke. I can actually taste lumps of ash. It's time for my deputy sheriff's story. I uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? Uh, well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there, but then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So, I got scared. And I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Heh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Girls are always honest. <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark, and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. 
Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Oh, man. The envelope that the man lost, where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye. And he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The Fiend tried to kill us, and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new. No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car. But I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. But, Inspector... We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. And to return to Paris and explain myself. But, sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. What is the constable's problem with me? <laughs> I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice. And I can't carry you, too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. 
It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train... The real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But... Wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume, just for a moment, that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven. Who would have cared enough to uncover the truth? The chief of police? The politicians? No. They wanted to revel in a successful manhunt. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters... Nico! No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policeman gossip. And there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next. And you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector, we're dealing with a dangerous man. And I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine. And I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. I'll be marching up this gangway today, no matter what. Someone has to stop that damn bomber before he endangers more people. Constable Oliver seems to be a little... simplistic. But I don't think he's a bad policeman. The way he reacted in the tunnel and got the train moving. Hats off. Hello, Constable Olivier. It's Oliver. I just wanted to say that you did a good job in the tunnel. Hmm. Thanks. How did you know how to get the train moving? I come from a family of miners, and my uncle is an engine driver down the mine. I see. And you looked over his shoulder? Yeah. Best way to learn. Did Legrand tell you about his theory? That it could be the real Raven? 
Of course he did. We're partners. But the modus operandi doesn't fit at all. The Raven wasn't a bomber. We have the letter. And the feather. That's his symbol. Anyone can put a feather in an envelope. You would know. What's that supposed to mean? It was you. What was me? You put the envelope on the safe. To blow myself up? You threw the bomb away. And now you're the famous hero, right? And the Raven must have paid you pretty well. That is ridiculous. Is it? Only you and I and Legrand were in the freight car. One of us must have put the envelope on the safe. Legrand didn't. And I didn't. Think about it. In my younger years, I might have considered abseiling from the crane down to the ship. But those days are long past. Fine car, but nothing compared to the young lady who owns it. Who could she be? An actress? A millionaire's daughter? She's certainly attracting a lot of attention. Amazing how much luggage there is for so few passengers, and I'd guess that three quarters of it belongs to the women. I'll take an inconspicuous look up close. I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting anyone to be crawling around on the ground in front of my door. Don't worry about it, miss. No harm done. Oh, that's good to hear, Mr... Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. May I ask your name? Patricia Mayers. Are you American? I am. Um, could you help me, please? Uh, certainly. Are you on your way to Egypt? Yes. Are you on holiday? My father works for a railroad company there. And is rebuilding the country after the war. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. One more. You're lucky to have a father who takes you to so many interesting places. Oh yes, lucky me. Aren't you interested in Egypt? The pyramids? The history? I would have been more interested in a father who doesn't travel 300 days a year. <laughs> I'm sure your father regrets that he can't always be with you. No doubt. And I'm sure he always wanted the best for me. But that doesn't stop him from thinking only about himself far too often. Bring my luggage on board, please. Excuse me? It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. Impertinent. Hmm. Is the doctor afraid to board the ship? Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, the hero of the hour. The hero of the hour, but out of work soon. Oh, you won't be a policeman anymore? Yes, but on my old beat, which is almost as good as being out of work. <laughs> I understand. Is your new job bothering you? On the contrary. I wasn't sure whether I made the right decision until now. I'm from the Black Forest, you know. There are only mountains there. <laughs> no ships, but now... <sighs> the salty breeze, the atmosphere... I think I want to stay at sea forever. The sea is one thing, the passengers are another. <laughs> it will be okay. What do you know about the Baroness? Mm. Nothing, really. Did you talk to her in the tunnel? No. Her butler was looking after her, and I was busy with Miss Miller. 
As you can imagine, it was a shock for her to see her son rolling away on a burning train. That's understandable. So, we were all glad when we heard about your brave deed. Have you already met the captain? Mario Di Conti. Heard of him? Should I have? He is something of a star in Italy. A war hero. In the First World War, when he was a young man, he sank more enemy ships than anyone else. In the Second World War, well, he had some you know, personal problems. You mean, like the ones you buy in bottles and pillboxes? Mm. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> anyway, sending him into combat was out of the question. They gave him a supply ship instead, and he became a hero again. His ship, part of a convoy from Palermo to North Africa, was the only one that made it, with an extra 100 seamen who he rescued from the other ships. Impressive. To say his health is rather shaky these days would be an understatement. I think most of my time on board will be spent dealing with his numerous ailments. Well, there's nothing left for me to do but to wish you a good trip. Oh, you are not coming with us? Unfortunately, no. I'm to go back to Zurich. What a pity. Take care, Dr. Gebhardt. Oh, I just remembered. We found these in the tunnel. Are they yours? I'm afraid so. Strophantine. Do you have heart problems? Hmm. Maybe it's for the best that you're not coming along. Too much excitement could be bad for your health. You mean, if I don't do anything, I'll probably have a few more years to live? That's right. Keep your chin up. Hello, Baroness. Ah, Inspector. Constable. Poppycock. You won't be a constable much longer. When they find out how you rescued that little boy, they'll have to promote you to Inspector. Very kind of you to say so, Baroness. I hope you survived the adventure in the tunnel unharmed. Scandalous. You book a first-class cabin, and then you're walking on the rails. <laughs> They wanted to bundle me off in a bus without my luggage. The circumstances, madam. I insisted on a limousine and didn't leave until all my luggage was recovered. Did you know that the real Eye of the Sphinx wasn't even on the train? I had no idea. Inspector Le Grand seems to prefer to keep me in the dark, although I'm the one paying for all of this. The Inspector is ensuring the safety of the Eye. Well, obviously. All the same, it was you who did the real work on the train. I hope that the remainder of your trip to Cairo will be less stressful. You aren't coming with us. I'm afraid Inspector Legrand doesn't want my company. Now, where's my damned butler? James, there you are. Is the Inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? Uh, well, actually... Baroness? Baroness, can you hear me? She fainted. No. No. Baroness? Again, harder. Hello. Can you hear me? I... Help me up. Uh, perhaps we should... Now. I'll get Dr. Gebhardt. No. No, no, Doctor. Just a little moment of weakness. Your arm, James. Take me to the ship. But of course, madam. That was no moment of weakness? She saw something that shocked her. Or someone. Very interesting. Especially since she doesn't want to admit it. Who or what did she see?
Neither of them seems to have noticed what happened down here. <laughs> You'll have a tough time with her. How does one get aboard without a ticket? Hmm. Not brilliant, but it's a possibility. Oh, who do we have here? Signore... This is Constable Anton Zellner. Signor Zelma, I heard about your fates in the mountains. Welcome aboard the MS Lydia. Thank you, Captain. I didn't know you'd be taking part in the journey, but I'm glad to have you with us. I'll have a nice cabin prepared for you immediately. The constable will not be joining us. He has other duties. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to hear about his adventures from the man himself. I'd like to accept your offer, but unfortunately, higher powers prevent it. I am sorry to hear that. We are by no means full, and have plenty of room for one more passenger. The constable just wants to have a quick look around and then leave before we set sail. When will that be? Oh, in about uh, 15 minutes. There you have it, constable. May I ask how to get to the cargo hold? Oh, Signori, there are much nicer places on board. But I'm interested in the cargo hold. Why is that? One of the trunks seems suspicious to me. Someone could be hidden in it. You? <laughs> you want to imply that the most brilliant and probably richest thief in all of Europe is stowing away in a trunk? That's not his style. That's what makes it more likely that it's not him, but a copycat who's behind all this. And a copycat's style might include doing whatever it takes, like hiding in a trunk if they've lost the ticket. Oh, come now. Actually, it would be possible for a registered passenger to board the ship without a ticket. What do you mean? You can't buy a ticket for the Lydia at the counter. You book the trip in advance. We know the names of all the passengers. As long as a passenger is on the guest list, we let them board the ship. Doesn't matter if they have a ticket or not. And did any of the passengers board without a ticket? I couldn't say. We ask for a name and check it on the list. The tickets are no more than souvenirs for the passengers. So much for your trunk theory. Regardless of what you say, I would still like to examine the cargo hold. All right, then, if you like. But we'll meet here again in ten minutes. Captain De Conti, before we depart, I'd like to send two telegrams. Certainly, Inspector. The cargo hold is over there. You can enter through a door on the forecastle. The horn will sound twice, five minutes before we set off. That's the signal for all the dock workers to leave the ship. Understood, Captain. Follow me to the bridge. You can send your telegrams from there. My time is running out. If I don't find anything in the cargo hold, my cruise will be over before it even begins. Oh, no. That's the young woman's cabriolet. Apparently, they absolutely had to take it to Egypt, at Daddy's expense, of course. It's too dark in here. I can't see my hand in front of my face, let alone look for clues. The door to this locker is ajar. Empty. Oh, what's this? Aha. Hmm. 
Hmm. The left three lockers are locked. on out the game's up I I'm opening the trunk he hello the shards are I startled too easily. It would be best if no one found out about this. There's some blood and hair stuck to the pipe. Hair I really can't afford to lose. I can make out a corridor, but no details. The glass is too dirty, and there's no light in there. It's no use. The door seems to be locked from the other side.
A detention cell for crew members? Or maybe for rowdy passengers? The cargo hold seems to be used as a changing room for the crew as well. Or at least the part of the crew that doesn't do their work in white suits. A chair is the last thing I need right now. I was sitting long enough over there in the corner. The shot hit this crate. The question is, was the gunman actually trying to hit it? And if so, why? Maybe the gunman just wanted to intimidate me. I can't imagine a more effective warning. It's too dark to make out anything inside the hole. Uh, I should take a closer look later. I'll hold it on the blood spattered end. After all, we already know who the victim is. Whoever locked the door is stronger than me. I should be careful. The gunman may still be nearby. <laughs> what are you up to, Zelna? I wanted to determine whether the gun had been fired recently, Inspector. I mean, what are you doing on the ship? I was jumped in the cargo hold. Of course you were. Here, look. Careful how you hold it. There could be fingerprints on the end. Surely you don't expect me to believe you. I was inspecting the trunk. I found it in the cargo hold, and it was clear that someone had hidden inside it to board the ship. Some people are willing to go to great lengths to be a part of this journey. Indeed. Whoever it was, they struck me on the head from behind with the pipe while I was looking for clues. Oh, and they shot at me as well. Ridiculous. You wanted to come along. Orders be damned, and so you found a way to stay here. I should throw you overboard. I would have dreamed up something less painful. Hmm, true. That doesn't look good. See? And there's a bullet wedged in a wooden crate down there. I don't have a gun. The doctor should have a look at it. Come with me. Inspector Legrand and Constable Zelna. So you have decided to join us on our journey after all. So it would seem. We are searching for Dr. Gebhardt. I'm just fine, Captain Conti. <laughs> the Conti. I'm in control. I can manage. Tell James he absolutely must wake me at a quarter to ten. Certainly, madam. Absolutely. I shall see that he does. And now I shall return to my chambers. You'll be in the bar tonight at ten, Inspector. If that's what you wish. It will be spectacular. I promise. The fresh sea air and perhaps a glass of champagne to many. But I'm glad that you decided to join us on our journey to Cairo. Not quite voluntarily. So he says. I was jumped from behind. But no, that, that is. Dr. Gephardt should have a look at him, Captain De Conti. Of course. Please, 
Have a seat in the saloon, Constable Zelna. I'll summon the doctor. Ah, doctor, there you are. Our brave Constable Zelna was attacked. Struck on the head. Oh. Sit down, please. Now, please, tell me exactly what happened. I think you've got a stowaway on board. I was jumped. Intolerable. I'll have the crew search every nook and cranny of the ship. And of course, Mr. Zelna, you are cordially invited to travel as our special guest. Good to know that at least one man doesn't want to throw me overboard. Is it bad? Yes, it hurts a lot. I spoke with Dr. Gebhardt. He suffered a violent blow to the back of the head. I cannot really say how bad it is. But I can. It really hurts. Why didn't anyone come looking for me? Didn't anyone notice that I didn't come back from the cargo hold? We did search for you, but we couldn't find you. Who was supposed to search the cargo hold? Constable Oliver. I'll have a talk with him about that later. I should hope so. How many fingers do you see? Three fingers. Okay. Where are we, and, and what time is it? I must have been out for ages. It's just after 8 p.m. You just missed dinner, but we'll all meet here in the saloon at 10 o'clock to have a drink together. Greeting the passengers personally is a tradition I will not break, even on this unusual journey. You're all right now, Constable. The bleeding has stopped, and the wound looks good. You may have a mild concussion. You just need a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, your only worries will be a headache <laughs> and an impressive bump. Thanks. That's a good enough reason to celebrate. Enough about crooks and thieves. From now on, you can start to enjoy your free cruise. <laughs> Inspector! What? A dark shadow. Upper deck, just now. Go, let's have a look. I'll join you. Me too. No, you stay here. Do you want to make this an argument? Robert, go to the Baroness and don't let her out of your sight. Zelna, you're coming to the port side. Doctor, you go to starboard. I'll start at the forecastle and work my way back to the two of you. Understood? But... Baroness von Trebitz. Hello? Baroness von Trebitz, open the door. Dr. Gebhardt insisted on coming along, but now he doesn't seem to be sure if that was a good idea. All right, Doc. I'm off. Oh, no. I'm not going on a manhunt all by myself. Are you okay? Maybe you had better take a rest, in case the blow was more severe. I'm okay. Zelda, up here! Come on, I think it came from up there. Sure, you just wanted to get a breath of fresh air. Zelda, look who we have here. Well, if that's not our shadow. And our stowaway. Spent any time hiding in a trunk recently? Uh. Me do, do nothing. He claims to be part of the crew. Just wanted to get some fresh air. Of course. The Baroness won't open the door, sir. Understood. Take him to the detention cell, Robert.
You were right. There was a stowaway. Yes, but he can't be the Raven. He's too young. Right, but that doesn't mean that the Raven isn't lurking here as well. What was that? A shot! It came from one of the cabins. Oh no! Baroness von Trebitz? Baroness! Open the door! Step aside, please. We have a murder on our hands, gentlemen. Hurry, Zelna. The murderer still has to be nearby. There is practically no one on deck. Anyone who's outside is a suspect. This time, we'll get him. Zelna, are you okay? Yes. Come on. We have to. Zelna. Zelna. Merda. Ah, you awake? Sleep well, did you? I didn't fall asleep voluntarily. Ah, it doesn't matter. We got along just fine without you. I didn't pass out last night because of the blow to my head, did I? Seems unlikely. Inspector Legrand thinks you were drugged. But how? The champagne. Who gave you the glass of champagne? Hmm. Captain De Conti. Interesting. Have you arrested anyone yet? You mean besides the Arab? He could hardly have committed the murder. You must have been with him when it happened. We heard the shot on the forecastle. I locked our friend in the detention cell in the cargo hold and then went up to assist Legrand. You were already sleeping the sleep of the just. About the champagne. Shouldn't it be possible to find traces of the tranquilizer in the glass? That is exactly what Legrand is trying to do. Without a laboratory? Oh, he's got a lab. His cabin is packed with all the latest forensic stuff. It's quite impressive what the inspector can do. A competent man, no doubt. And surprisingly well prepared. And diligent. He's been at it all night with his brushes and tinctures and glasses and everything. Working like a man possessed. I wouldn't want to be the raven now. What's the state of play? How was the Baroness killed? Uh, the Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We'll know more once the doc finishes examining the body in the medical center. And no one saw anything suspicious? <laughs> no one saw a shadowy raven leaving the Baroness's cabin, if that's what you mean. A lot of people heard the gunshot. Inspector Legrand wants to question the passengers again this morning, once they've all calmed down, and he's had a chance to examine the evidence. Besides the Arab, has anyone else aroused your suspicion? No. Seconds after the alarm went off, the decks were swarming with frightened passengers. Hmm, yes. A clever way to stay incognito during the commotion. Hmm, but we still have our primary suspect, the Raven. You really think he's returned? Well, I think that no one knows as much about the Raven as Legrand. But still, it all seems so incredible. I suppose that you and Legrand inspected the crime scene and the surroundings. Of course. And we already hit the jackpot. The murder weapon. Really? Where did you find it? On the gangway. The gangway for boarding the ship folds up and hooks onto the hull when it's not being used. The murderer probably wanted to throw the gun into the sea. He casually dropped it overboard. But it landed on the gangway. Bad luck. But Legrand and I were on the side deck right after the shot. There was no one there. Hmm. Maybe the murderer threw the gun away later. We recovered it in the early hours. Hmm. 
I think I'll look for Inspector Legrand now. Mm, do what you think's best. You won't get rid of me. I'm here to stay, Constable Oliver. Be that as it may. Inspector Legrand ordered me to guard the cargo hold with our special guest. That's fine by me. Inspector Legrand may be able to get by without sleep for days on end, but not me. It's not easy playing with the big boys, Constable Zellner. No, it certainly isn't. These things made quite a racket last night. I couldn't hear myself think. Big, soft towels. I could reserve a deck chair with it. No, better not. I'd really like to lie in the sun and take a nap, but I don't have time for that at the moment. No, Jacob. Business before pleasure. I suppose the life jackets are stowed there, close to the railing, close at hand in case of emergency. I hope I don't find myself needing a life jacket. It may not seem like it, but Constable Oliver is actually a very effective watchman. <clears throat> uh, 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 what's going on? The raven just flew by. What? Or at least, he might as well have. Uh, I wasn't asleep. I understand. It was just a ruse. Any conclusions about our young stowaway? Uh, he's a bit suspicious. Foreign and whatnot. I see. Did he act suspiciously in any way? No. Nope. The shot surprised him as much as it did me. Looked in on him earlier. Still seems to be asleep. Covered with a blanket from head to toe? Ah, oh, oh. he's still in there. I poked him. May I go downstairs and have a couple of words with our guest? No, you may not. Come again? Inspector Legrand wants to conduct all the interrogations himself. I'm sure he'll understand if I form my own conclusions. He ordered me to guard the door, and that's just what I'm going to do. How about a bit of individual initiative? How about letting a man do his job? Or do you think you'd be better at it? What do you think? What happened here last night? The Raven broke into the Baroness's cabin, she surprised him, and he shot her. What was he looking for in her cabin? She was a rich woman. Why did he lock the door? <laughs> Why not? From inside? An impressive trick. I'm not saying I know how he did it. I'm just saying that it was him. Why didn't he leave a Raven feather? Are you serious? We'd have suspected him straight away. But fortunately, we still did. Let's assume that the old Raven really has returned and that he really is responsible for all this. Who is he? Or she? Oh, could be anyone. No one's ever seen the Raven. He could also be paying someone else to do his dirty work. Well, of course. Uh, it's a fact that he used to work with partners. They even arrested some of his accomplices. But no one could ever identify the Raven himself. Some claims that they didn't even know that they were working for him. Fascinating. He could have hired someone with financial difficulties to set off the alarm at a certain time without that person knowing why they were doing it. The man Legrand shot back then. He was a famous safecracker. He could just as well have been a henchman. Or the real Raven. 
There's probably no better cover for a big thief than acting like a small one. I don't want to keep you from your duties any longer. Good idea. The stowaway surely didn't sleep well last night in the cargo hold. Although his cell is probably more comfortable than my cabin, and more spacious. I have to talk to the young fellow right away. Even though he was already under arrest at the time of the shot, he may have noticed something before. If I want to get into the cargo hold, I'll have to get rid of the constable first. He won't let me talk to our young friend. I wonder if this game is an advanced version of Bocce. Maybe the inventor realized that it's difficult to play ball games on a boat and came up with an alternative. Salty sea air in my old lungs, wind in my thinning hair. If I hadn't become a policeman, I could have been a sailor. We were here yesterday when we heard the shot, and it was also here where Legrand caught our stowaway. Hmm. Hmm. A boat like this would also make a good hideout for a stowaway. Were the tarpaulins arranged like that on purpose so that no one could put them back in order once they get in? You can tell at a glance that everything is ship-shape with this boat. The grate must be part of the ship's ventilation system. Nothing out of the ordinary. The grate shouldn't be so easy to open. Did the stowaway open it and we caught him in the act? Hmm, no. The pipe is too narrow. He wouldn't fit in there. I guess the cover has been defective for a while. I could inform the captain that the grid has to be repaired, but if I start reporting all the problems on the ship, I'd have to shelve my murder investigation. Why is there an axe hanging here? Hmm. I suppose it's for chopping through ropes in the event that the lifeboats can't be lowered. Or they use it to enforce who's allowed on the boat and who's not. This isn't a panoramic deck for visitors. There are pipes, steel cables, chains up here. You can smell the smoke from the funnel. I have no idea how the ship works. And I really don't care, as long as it stays afloat. The ship's bridge. Two men. One of them navigating. I get the impression that the officers keep things running. It seems like the captain concentrates on the passengers and the bar. I better let the men do their work. If one of them had detected something yesterday, he'd already have informed the Grand or the Captain. Curious. One can easily toss a gun into the sea from almost anywhere on the ship without being noticed. And yet, the murderer chose the one spot where it's not actually possible. The gangway is hard to miss. Why did the murderer drop the gun on the gangway? They must have noticed their mistake, even if their back was to the sea. So, why didn't they take the gun and throw it a few meters farther into the sea? Hmm. 
The cabin was sealed. I'm pretty sure the seal doesn't have any legal relevance here on the open sea, but I'm still dependent on Legrand letting me join his team. I better not blow it by breaking his seal without permission. I better ask Legrand for permission first. My investigations would be much more difficult if he were upset with me because of such things. I better ask Le my invest. An evacuation plan? And some tips from the doctor for avoiding seasickness, sunburn, and the like. And here, a schedule of activities. A drink with the captain, a shuffleboard competition on the forecastle. And that's about it. A real barrel of fun. A model of the Lydia before it was rebuilt. It used to be a freighter. The wide hallways, the cabins, and the saloon were added later. An alarm like this one was set off yesterday. Mm. This one hasn't been set off. The security seal is intact. That is Legrand's cabin. I'm not paying for this trip, and that's a fair price for my cabin. It's rather... plain, shall we say. Come in. Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. And there's the next one. Excuse me? You want something else from me, don't you? I'm afraid I do. What a first day at work. Well? What's the result of your examination of the victim? She is dead. I didn't make you work all night long, Dr. Gebhardt. <sighs> she was shot. Point-blank shot. Probably with a pistol. It seems like she was lying in bed. The shot struck her heart. She died immediately. One shot? More were unnecessary. And we only heard one shot, no? And there's just one entrance wound. Just one. I am told that I was drugged. That's how it seems. What can you tell me about it? Me? W why should that be my business? Haven't you analyzed the glass? No, I haven't. The inspector said he's the better chemist. I let him do it. That way I could at least concentrate on the body. Do you think the Baroness might have been drugged? She was very tired and unsteady when Legrand and I saw her. Yeah, I heard about that. I must have just missed her in the saloon. And without having seen her myself, it is hard to make a diagnosis. Of course. Can you say something about her general health? She was quite overweight, and the butler said that she suffered from diabetes. Despite that, she hadn't visited a doctor for several years. Doesn't sound good. Happens more frequently than you might suppose. Some people are scared of doctors and pay with an early death. It is possible that the Baroness wouldn't have lived much longer anyway. Do you know whose glass I drank from? What do you mean? Captain de Conti handed me a glass of champagne. But where did he get it? I don't know. Did you ask him? I'm just asking because you were also in the saloon when the champagne was served. Yes, but I only entered the saloon a few seconds before you did. I didn't manage to get a drink myself. Which, in retrospect, is lucky. Ah, you're right about that. Have you already removed the bullet? Did Legrand send you? What is that Frenchman's problem? I already told you. I will get in touch as soon as I have it. That is also what I told the constable. 
who he kept sending all night long, once I finally got rid of Legrand himself. Did he look over your shoulder? He probably wanted to take the scalpel from my hand and hack away himself. But this is my surgery, and I will not let amateurs interfere with my work. That's understandable. How much longer will it take? Ugh. I have just finished. Send my regards to His Majesty. Thanks. I think that's it for now. No. That is it for now, then, and later. I'm going to lie down for a few hours. Can you tell that to your boss? But... Could I at least have the key? Absolutely not. But if we have to examine the victim again... Then the esteemed inspector knows where to find me. In my cabin. In bed. Good night, Constable Zellner. Come in. Ah, Zellner, are you ready? Good morning, Inspector Legrand. Uh, my head is pounding, but I think I'm okay. Chloral hydrate. Hmm? That's why you have a headache. I found traces of it in your champagne glass. What have you found out so far? The Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We heard the shot. The murderer quickly fled the cabin and dropped the murder weapon over the railing later. A simple story so far. But why was her cabin door locked? Exactly. If the murderer wanted to make it seem like a suicide, he'd have shot her in the head and left the gun at the crime scene. And if it was murder, why did he go to all the trouble of locking the door from inside? And how did he manage that anyway? Especially since we arrived just a few seconds later and didn't see anyone near the cabin. Something doesn't make sense here. No, it doesn't, and it's driving me crazy. Did you find the murder weapon? On the gangway on the side of the ship. I suspect the murderer tried to drop it into the sea. He would have stood close to the railing to let it fall unseen. And since he doesn't know the ship, he had bad luck and dropped it right onto the gangway. Indeed. And do you find that probable? Not a bit. Neither do I. What kind of a gun is it? A pistol. A Luger 08. Antique. Manufactured a million times during and after the First World War. Austrian model. The owner is David Kreutzer, the violinist. We found him tonight totally drunk on the bow of the ship. He confirmed that it's his gun, but he claims that it was stolen from him. Fingerprints? Nothing. But it's worth mentioning that the clip was missing two bullets. Hmm. And it's definitely the murder weapon. The ballistic tests are incomplete. Actually, I've been waiting far too long for the bullet recovered from the corpse. Pay the good doctor a visit, Zellner, and see that he does his job. About the bullet, here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected, a 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though, we can assume that we have the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, take this with you. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything important. But only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. Do you believe the violinist? He'll be the first person I question. He claims he can't remember anything from the last few hours. Says he drank a bottle of schnapps. He was on the train, and he doesn't have an alibi. His drunkenness could be a smokescreen. He fits the profile, he travels a lot, has access to high society. Could be interesting. And this chloral hydrate? Is a tranquilizer. 
can be dissolved in alcohol. The effect begins in minutes and lasts for hours. Who gave you the glass of champagne? I believe it was Captain De Conti. If believing were enough for us, we'd have become priests, Constable. Be a policeman and find out for sure. Understood. You think that the jewel thief is the murderer? Our friend would have needed another key to open the safe and steal the second eye. The one the Baroness was carrying. At least, that's what we implied. What do you mean? The Baroness was famous for her forgetfulness. I convinced her to give me the third key. It seems safer for the eye. The thief searches the Baroness's cabin looking for the third key. She returns from the saloon earlier than expected, surprises him, and he can't allow her to identify him. He imprisons her until the coast is clear and then shoots her. And thus, the thief becomes a murderer. But still doesn't have all the keys. Are you sure that there's no bomb inside this time? Professor Lucien locked it in front of an audience and it will be open for the first time in Cairo. Let's hope so. It would take hours to crack it. And you'd need heavy machinery. Or the keys. Or the three keys, that's right. Do you think... Do you really think that the Raven is behind all this? He wrote the letter that was on the safe in the train. Without the letter, we wouldn't have opened the safe and the bomb wouldn't have exploded. But it doesn't seem like him, does it? The Raven was famous in part because he never hurt anyone, much less killed anyone during a burglary. It's his handwriting and he called me Nico. No one else does that. I chased that man across Europe for years. It is him. It has to be him. But the evidence... Enough. I'll be on my way. I want to find out who gave me the drugged champagne. Good idea. Inspector Legrand, are you okay? Maybe you should take a break. I can sleep once I've caught the raven. Goodbye, Constable. Be seeing you. Legrand is risking not just his career, but his health as well on his hunt for the Raven. He's working like a demon. Maybe that's why he caught the Raven and no one else. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big, heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. An impressive piece. But I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. But there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. Hmm. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we're on a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. I can't say why, and it seems impossible. But something tells me that the murderer entered and left the cabin through the door. The only question is how.
Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board, and I will expose him. B. The Baroness seems to have known the murderer, and that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. A big, ugly, and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. Sunflowers. By Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. Hmm, a tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. The tape recorder is older than the hills, but it was once very expensive, top of the range, and it doesn't come cheap. Hmm, strange. There's only one reel. And it's the wrong one. No, no sign of the original reel. A reel made by Zeibling. I know the brand. Zeibling's tapes can be overwritten many times without losing quality. They're used in offices so that executives can record messages for the secretaries on the same tape over and over again. But they're not good for much else. They're robust, but they don't offer much in terms of sound quality. The Seibling brand reel from the Baroness's cabin. The tape that came on it and the reel that belongs to the player are both gone. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. Hmm, nothing. The blood spot is the only sign that someone committed a crime in here. Hmm, somehow... That's odd. The blood is so... red. Shouldn't it gradually darken in the air? Turn brown? The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark, as the saying goes. I should take a sample. The unusual all... Hmm... Can't see anything. Wow, heavier than it looks. Aha! Hmm, nothing special. Although, it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top, literally burnt. I'd better take it with me.
Apparently, the Baroness didn't have time to unpack her bags. Or rather, didn't have time to tell her butler to unpack them for her. Something's under there. More feathers. And they're singed as well. I'll put some with the others. Hmm. Sifting through all that would take ages. But here, the Baroness's handbag. Ha ha. A small leather-bound book. 1964 is engraved on it. This must be the Baroness's diary. Let's see. Yes, it's a diary, all right. Difficult to read. No entry from yesterday. A brief... Sober description of what she's done recently. Met Morris. Arranged benefit concert for renovation of Louvre Southeastern Wing. Times photo shoot for Eye of Sphinx. BM. Poor excuse for photographer. Too fidgety. And so on. Hmm. This entry looks strange. The handwriting is shaky, difficult to read. Dreamt of Bobby. Yesterday would have been his birthday. Next week, Jay's. Hmm. Cosmetics, a handkerchief, a spectacles case, nothing special. The Baroness was a very busy woman, and it looks like she had to cope with loss. She writes about Bubby and Jay. Neither seem to be alive anymore. Almost every family lost loved ones in the war. Maybe hers as well. The portholes face the side deck. If someone climbed out of the cabin through a porthole, Legrand and I would have seen them. Hmm. The portholes are locked. One cannot open or close them from outside. It's the same problem as with the door. If someone left the cabin through the porthole, how did they lock it? And the Baroness wasn't shot from outside. The doctor said she was shot at close range. I'll leave it there. I don't have time to read all of it. Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. There may be something else. The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhard missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark, as the saying goes. I should take a sample. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhard kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? Hmm. Assuming the murderer isn't a magician, and the Baroness locked the door herself before she went to bed, the murderer couldn't have left the cabin through the door. So, the murderer must have still been in here when Dr. Gebhardt kicked the door in. 
which is unlikely because someone would have seen him, or he found another way out of the cabin. The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as worried. Hello, Mr. Inch. Oh, Constable, hello. You look the worse for wear. It must be terrible for you. Quite terrible. No one will hire me now. Uh, excuse me? My mistress was murdered. Would you hire a butler who's been mixed up in a murder? But if it turns out that you're not guilty... If, but what if not? Who else would they blame? There are no gardeners on this ship. <laughs> I understand your problem. Under these circumstances, I'm sure you'd answer some questions that could help clear your name, wouldn't you? Of course. Did you notice anything suspicious last night? No, sir. After the Baroness went to the saloon, I went to the forecastle. I was there until the alarm went off. I went to the side deck and arrived shortly after Professor Lucian and Miss Miller. We found you and Inspector Legrand there. You were unconscious, and the inspector asked us to take care of you. Did you hear the gunshot? No, just the alarm, sir. You said you were on the forecastle. It sounded like the Baroness let you have the rest of the night off. Not entirely, sir. One of the crew informed me that the Baroness wanted to be roused at quarter to ten. Right. Why was that? I suppose that she wanted to toast the success of the journey with the captain and the other passengers. She hadn't intended to take a nap, then? That was not her way, sir. She had a lot of... Spirit, shall we say, when it came to social engagements and a glass or two of champagne. The Baroness's cabin seems to have been ransacked. Indeed, sir, by the Baroness herself. Really? She was searching for something the entire afternoon. And did she find it? I think she did, sir, yes. She was in high spirits when she finally left her cabin. You wouldn't happen to know what she was looking for, would you? I'm afraid not. Would you describe the Baroness as orderly? Uh, well, she... She always had a lot of responsibilities, sir. That doesn't answer my question. She used to take a lot of luggage on journeys, and I helped her keep track of it as best I could. She was always very angry when she couldn't find something. What about the photos and the documents I saw in her cabin? I really don't know. They were out of bounds to me, sir. Memories from the war, I'd say. They meant a lot to her. The Baroness seemed to be pretty drunk the last time I saw her. Is that so? Does that surprise you? Did the Baroness not drink? Oh, yes, she drank. It was no secret. I understand. Uh, how serious was her habit? Serious enough, sir. Was she under any medical supervision? Certainly not, sir. She adamantly refused to see a doctor. Like so many elderly women, she had a distinct aversion to hospitals and the like. How long had you worked for the Baroness? Six months, sir. Only six months? I always thought that butlers stayed with their employers for decades. Those decades have to start at some point, Constable. Her former butler wasn't able to fulfill his duties any longer. Gout, sir. I understand. I took on his duties and hoped for a secure position for the next 20 years. May I ask what happened to your arm? 
a souvenir from the war, sir. Doesn't it hinder your work? Yes, sir. Obviously. I didn't mean to offend you. The Baroness had a soft spot for disabled veterans. I think she'd been through a lot herself. I think that's all for now. Please, sir, find the murderer. You have to clear me of all suspicion. Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. He gave me the glass of champagne last night. Hello, Captain De Conti. Hey, Constable Zelda. You're back on your feet again. Glad to see it. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. Yes, the captain. I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others rushed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who, of course, he had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but you look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. 
you know, this is an old ship, and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh, not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What you experience on the journey, that's what it's about. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, constable. The alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. As expected, fresh ice and tongs. Constable Zelda, what is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays? I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well then, why didn't you say so? But bring the tongs back when you're done. Otherwise, I'll have cold fingers all day. <laughs> Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird. But maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone, but who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. 
Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered. But if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me. But there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And do you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course. Good work. There's something in there. Ah. Someone stuffed this in the vase. Looks like it's been used to muffle a gunshot. If this isn't an important discovery, I don't know what is. Legrand, here I come. What a discovery. This pillow was obviously used to muffle a shot. Legrand, here I come. A singed pillowcase is proof that there must have been a second gunshot. In Vector? Can't you knock? I... Uh, didn't realize. I'm really... I... I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to question each passenger individually. Anyone without an airtight alibi will be checked for gunshot residue. But, Inspector... People trip up when you put pressure on them, Constable Zellner. The Raven is nervous. He's changed his methodology and become a murderer. I'll see it in his eyes. After you. But, Inspector Legrand! We have no proof that the Raven and the murderer are the same person. You may not know it, but I do. I will catch him with or without your help. I don't believe it. What's gotten into him? Oh, well. It makes no sense to tell him about my theories if his opinion is already set. I need evidence. Or better yet, the murderer. I also need his lab if I'm going to get anywhere. I need to get in there somehow. And I really need to talk to the stowaway. He may have information, and the inspector will just ignore him, since he's too young to be the Raven.
A pitiful attempt to make the interior of the ship seem less dreary. A bit of paint on the walls would have helped more, especially since a plant won't survive long without daylight. Hmm. There are little stones in the flower pot. Not only does the poor plant have to make do without sunlight, it doesn't have any soil either. Really? What am I supposed to do with stones? Although, sooner or later... The ground locked the door. The lock isn't especially secure. If I had a wire or something like that, I could probably pick it. Mr. Kreitzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests, one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. Matt is keeping himself busy with that strange game. He seems to be okay again, but I think he'd be running around all over the place if he'd really come to terms with what happened on the train. Hello there, partner. Hi. Are you all right? Uh-huh. Have you recovered from our adventure? Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Zellner. Hmm? What's going on? What do you mean? Everybody's acting so strange. And there's tape across that door. I saw that in a movie once. You don't have to be worried. Is it about the man from the train? It might be about the thief, yes. Haven't you caught him yet? I'm working on it. Okay. I heard you and your mom used to argue a lot. We did. Everything was bad. The house, school, the other kids. We didn't have much money, and I was always alone. You do know that your mother would love to have been with you, don't you? She had to go out to work, to earn money. She wouldn't have had to, if Dad were still around. Mm. And how do you get along with her now? I'm always happy when we do something together on vacation. She has more time for me now, and I like my boarding school. I have lots of friends, and the teachers aren't so bad. Your mother and Professor Lucien seem to be on very good terms with each other. Mm. Don't you like him? I don't know. He seems to be very nice. I guess. Lady Westmacott is all by herself in the saloon. Maybe you'd like to visit her later. Sure. The lady tells exciting stories. I know. She's my favorite writer. She told me that it's not much fun to write detective novels. She'd rather write something else, but her fans always want the same thing. They made her rich and famous. I told her to write what she wants to write. If it's good, someone will buy it. And if not, at least she had fun writing it. Then she smiled and nodded. 
She said it was a good idea. What are you playing there? I'm playing shuffleboard. At least I'm trying to. Never played it before. It's easy. Professor Lucian explained it to me. And who won? We didn't play. You didn't want to play with him, did you? Sure. I think you'll have to explain the rules to me first. Okay. You play with the blue pucks and I play with the red ones. You have to push the pucks with this stick into the zone over there and score as many points as possible. Sounds easy. How many pucks do I have? Six. Now here comes the kicker. First it's your turn, then mine, and so on. But everyone is allowed to shoot the other person's pucks out of the zone. Then let's get started. Oh yeah. What are we playing for? Uh, I thought we'd just play for fun. That's boring. We have to bet something. Otherwise it isn't fun. You English people. So I'll bet my brand new slingshot. And you? I don't want to gamble. How about ice cream in Cairo? Okay. If I win, I get the slingshot. If I lose, I get an ice cream in Cairo. Hey! Never try to cheat Matt Miller. So? What do you say? Ice cream versus slingshot? Mmm, all right. Let the games begin. That's it. Oh, man. The athlete wins the day. One more time. No, that's enough for me. All right. Here. Are you sure? Gambling debts are debts of honor. I'll give it back to you when I don't need it anymore, okay? Okay, but make sure my mom doesn't catch you with it. She thinks it's dangerous. A good slingshot, drawing on the expert knowledge of generations of boarding school students. And combined with the stones, there are countless opportunities for making mischief. Miss Miller and the professor are talking intensely. She seems pretty relaxed, by her standards. Good morning, Miss Miller. Professor Lucien? Constable Zellner, how are you? I, I heard you passed out last night. Well, not quite. I was poisoned. Oh. That wretch! Who do you mean by that wretch? That stowaway. That new raven. The young man can't be the murderer. Constable Oliver had already apprehended him when the shot was fired. You mean... Whoever killed the Baroness is still on the loose. I think... 
I should take my leave. I I'd like to rest for a while. One last question, Professor. Do you think the eye is well protected in the safe in Legrand's cabin? Of course it is. They assured me that it would take hours of work with heavy machinery to crack the safe. And if Legrand isn't in his cabin, Constable Oliver or I check that everything is in order every hour. I understand. I want to go back to my cabin. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, of course. See you later. I... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Professor Lucien so abruptly. I, uh... I don't know what's wrong with him. Learning that there's still a burglar on board seemed to frighten him. He was so relaxed the whole time, and then... Hmm. And then, the stupid Swiss constable came by and made him anxious. Oh, I didn't mean that. No matter. I'm sure he'll calm down and come back soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. How is Matt? He seems happy enough. After all the commotion, he's already back to his old self again. But I haven't told him about the murder. That would be a bit too much for him. I think he's made of sterner stuff. I want to thank you again for what you did on the train. I wouldn't have known... Everything's fine. Think nothing of it. How was last night for you? It was awful. I was having a conversation with Edgar, uh, Professor Lucien, here on the forecastle. Then I wanted to look for the lady and went forward via the side deck. When I passed the Baroness's cabin, I heard a muffled scream. You heard a scream? Yes. I thought the Baroness probably had a fall. I went to the door and listened for a moment. Since I couldn't hear anything, I knocked on the door and asked whether she was all right. There was no answer. Interesting. And then? I, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. I saw the Baroness's butler, Mr. Inch, on the forecastle. I thought he might have the key and went back. On the way, the Bobby crossed my path, and then Edgar, who wanted to check the safe. I explained the situation to him, and then the alarm went off. How did the scream sound? It was a short outcry, very frightened, as if someone had been startled. Was it a woman's voice? Yes, the voice was high. So it could have been a scream from the Baroness. Possibly because she discovered someone in her cabin. Possibly. That person might have threatened her with a weapon, so that she wouldn't scream for help. Oh, God. He waited until the coast was clear. Oh, please, stop it, Mr. Zellner. The Baroness's butler said that he was on the forecastle as well? Yes, he was standing on the other side of the deck smoking a cigarette. Was he on the forecastle the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was there, and later he was on the side deck with us. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he looked after you while you were unconscious. He unbuttoned your collar and held your head while the doctor checked you. But you can't say for certain whether he came from the forecastle with you and Professor Lucien, or afterwards. Well, no. But where else could he have come from? Did you report that to Inspector Legrand? Yes, last night. He was very interested and took a lot of notes. But I wanted to look for Lady Westmacott, and he let me go without further delay. He said that he'd take down my full statement today. I understand. Do you think the man from the train also killed the Baroness, Constable Zellner? I don't know yet. It's horrible. Explosions, thieves, murderers. This isn't the right place for a lady and a little boy. You and Professor Lucien seem to be having a lively conversation. Oh, yes. He's an expert in ancient Egyptian art and preeminent in hieroglyphic research. He's the head of the Egyptian department in the British Museum, you know. And he's going to open an exhibition at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Right. Uh, for the eye. They had planned on exhibiting both jewels together for the first time in decades, but... That's not going to happen now, sadly. I think it's quite upsetting for him. We're working hard to ensure that at least one eye will be on display. I know. I'll ask Lady Westmacott if she'd like to participate in the opening of the exhibition. I think it would be good for her. And Professor Lucien will surely offer you a private tour. 
You're American, aren't you? That's correct. And you moved to England because of the job? I lived in England before. During the Second World War, I volunteered. I worked in a pharmacy on a U.S. base north of London. In a pharmacy? Interesting. Well, it was the war and everyone was sent where they could help best. Please, go on, Mrs. Miller. After the war, I studied music in London. I met my husband there. We married and went back to the States together. He was also American? No, English. But he said he had problems with his family and he wanted to be as far from them as possible. And you gave up your studies for him? Well, yes, I did. Life as a single mother couldn't have been easy. It was pretty tough then. I worked from morning till night and it was still only enough for the bare necessities. And I couldn't give Matt all the attention he needed. And then Lady Westmacott entered your life. It was like an angel appeared to me. She must have offered me the position out of pity. I had no experience as a carer. She made me a generous offer. I couldn't believe it. And she really adores Matt. She's offered him a good education, and now he has every opportunity in life. An almost unbelievable story. I'm still afraid that it's a dream and that I'll wake up one day. How does it feel to work for such a world-famous person? The work is very interesting and varied, and it pays well, too. You are very lucky that the lady offered the position to you. I just hope she won't change her mind one day. What would become of Matt's education then? I really make an effort to measure up to Lady Westmacott's expectations, but sometimes I feel like I fall short. Lady Westmacott couldn't ask for a better companion. I'm saving up as much money as I can all the same. I'd do anything so that Matt doesn't have to give up his new life. Lady Westmacott dropped a hint on the train that she killed her hero, Partout. What did she mean by that? Oh, she must have meant the manuscript. Manuscript? She always takes it with her. It's an unpublished Partout novel. I once asked her why she never published it. She said that according to her will, the novel's only to be published after her death. And in it, Partout will be killed? Maybe. I've never read it. No one has. You'd better ask her yourself. If you worked in a pharmacy, you would certainly know something about medicines and poisons. Everything is a potential poison, Constable. It depends on the dose. Have you ever heard of chloral hydrate? It's a tranquilizer, isn't it? I'm asking you. Lady Westmacott also asked questions like that, for her last novel. But since I've never wanted to kill anyone, I never bothered with things like strychnine and arsenic and all that. I could recommend something for a headache, a sore throat or rash. That's kind of you, but there's really no need. I'll be seeing you, Miss Miller. Constable? Constable Oliver brought something to drink. You can tell it's not the first time he's had to guard something. The bottle should be full of water, unless the good constable happens to have a secret alcohol problem. No way to verify that. I can't get the bottle without him noticing. Ahem. <coughs> Uh, what do you want? Inspector Legrand is questioning the first of the passengers in the saloon. And? It will be hours before he gets to the stowaway. And? We'll save time if I question him. We'd also save time if you stopped asking me the same things over and over again. I will not let you in. What time is it, by the way? Got an appointment? No, but I'm hungry. Go and get yourself something. I'll mind the door in the meantime. Ha uh ha. -huh. You could bring me something, though. So, what do you want to eat? Oh, anything. An apple or something like that. Leave it with me. Yeah, thanks.
Whatever Constable Oliver wants, he's getting ham and eggs. And just a pinch of salt for our friendly constable. Good. Constable Oliver. Huh? Ham and eggs, piping hot. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't really. I don't see anyone here who'd rebuke you. It was a hard night. Yeah, true. Oh, mm. oh delicious. <laughs> mm. Just enough salt. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was good of you. Cheers. You don't expect me to wash your dirty dishes as well, do you? No, of course not, Your Majesty. Oh, that was a proper meal and no mistake. Constable Oliver is drinking the water he brought along. Without it, he'd get very thirsty. All right. Ow! 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 Ah! Hey, Zelda, what in blazes was that? What? Something hit me! You mean, someone shot at you? Yes, well, no, um, I don't know. Didn't you notice anything? I was riveted by the fantastic view. We Swiss aren't used to seeing the horizon like this. And my bottle's broken too! Oh, I don't believe this. Could you, uh, could you bring me something to drink? Those salmon eggs were pretty salty. I'm sorry. I have to proceed with my investigations. Goodbye. Let's see how long he can resist his thirst. Not long at all. Nervous? I would be too in your position. Who are you? My name is Adil, and you are... Constable Zelna. Why did you sneak onto the ship, Adil? I wanted to go back home. You're Egyptian? There's no work for me in Italy. I want to see my family again. And since you don't have money, you stowed away. So what if I did? So? It was you who knocked me out. Me? <laughs> Never. No? Where were you when I was attacked? Well, I couldn't take anything with me on this trip, so I uh, snuck into the kitchen and took some canned goods. Interesting. And how do you know when I was attacked? Well, I, I thought it was yesterday, shortly before we set sail. I take this bump personally. What were you searching for on deck last night? I was hiding the whole evening. I wanted to go out and get some fresh air, see the stars. But then suddenly, they were looking for me. Were you in one of the cabins? No. Did you see anyone on the deck or on the roof? No. And after we arrested you? The English policeman put me in this cell. Then he left. I've been here ever since. And you didn't notice anything along the way? No, nothing. What about the gunshot? Didn't you hear it? Uh, yes. The English policeman had already arrested me. We heard a bang and looked around. And then? Then, the bobby was in a hurry to get rid of me. He almost pushed me down the stairs and locked me in here. He left, and, and then a short time later, the alarm went off. Constable Oliver wasn't with you anymore when the alarm went off? No. I was scared that the ship would sink with me sitting here like a rat in a trap. It's hard for me to believe a single word of your story. Because I'm a foreigner? Because you seem to have learned our language in the space of a day. Accent free. Believe what you want. Who paid you to distract us? What? 
You went for a walk around the deck and let yourself be seen. Everyone goes off hunting you, and in the meantime, your partner shoots the Baroness in peace. No, I didn't do anything. I didn't want to distract anyone. I, I just want to go home. You're a liar, and a bad one at that. But sir, I'm telling the truth. And I'm the Raven. Inspector Legrand will deal with you. He's lying like a cheap rug. But he probably doesn't know anything about the murder. Very disappointing. So I have to keep searching. What interests me most is the shot that was fired here in the cargo hold last night. The young man is lying like a cheap rug. That much is clear. The cargo hold also seems to serve as a changing room for the crew, at least for the ones who don't wear white uniforms. A stroke of luck. The lock is open. Hmm. Oil-stained overalls. And here, an old toolbox. It's been through a lot. Hardly any paint, dented, and the lid is held shut by a wire. I'll take it with me. Hmm. Some wrenches, a bit of wire wool, an oily cloth, and here, a screwdriver. I've got the screwdriver. That's all I need. Whoever fired the shot hit the crate. Did the shooter just want to intimidate me, or... Maybe he needed the bullet. Can't see anything. If the bullet is still stuck in the wood, it's too deep to reach with my fingers. Can't see and if the bu This piece of wire held the lid of the toolbox closed. The wire is quite strong, but flexible all the same. Well, I think the bullet is still in the wood. I'm not a weapons specialist, but at first sight, I'd say that this bullet looks exactly the same as the one Dr. Gebhardt gave me for Legrand. That would mean that the murderer also fired a shot here in the cargo hold before the murder. But why? Did they just want to make sure the old guns still worked? Or was it something else? And did the bullet really come from the same gun? I can only check that in Legrand's cabin. That takes the biscuit! I noticed that the door was unguarded. I just wanted to make sure that everything was all right. Tell it to Legrand. He's expressly forbidden anyone to speak to the witness before he does. Legrand already knows, and gave his approval. Really? So you don't mind me confirming that with him, then? Don't act like that. Legrand can't manage all this alone. We're a team. Only until the end of this case. All right. Let's go to Legrand and tell him what happened. You fell asleep, and then you left the door unguarded. Well, are we going? Hmm? Uh, no, but don't try it again. Of course not. The lock isn't especially secure. I should be able to open it with the wire from the cargo hold.
There we go. A lock, master and son. Tough to crack. If I wanted to steal the eye, I'd concentrate on getting the three keys. Neatly folded and unused. Legrand hasn't slept since we cast off, nor on the train. If everything goes according to plan, the first time this monster is opened will be in the museum in Cairo. Fingers crossed. Legrand must have taken and developed the photos himself. He even made copies and enlargements. He seems to be prepared for everything, with access to more resources than a normal detective. There's nothing written on the bottle. I suppose it's some sort of stimulant, legal or not. Legrand has been awake for at least 30 hours straight, maybe more. I shudder to think what kind of side effects this stuff might have. A policeman on a murder investigation should have his wits about him. The risk that he could miss evidence or endanger himself and others is too high. Legrand's file on the Raven. Centimeters thick, but totally useless. We're not dealing with the Raven. Why can't he see that? Our man is ruthless, a bomber, and quite probably a murderer. This file belongs in a museum. It's history. The inspector should concentrate on the present. This is the pipe from the cargo hold. Legrand seems to have inspected it for fingerprints. I can still make out the powder. Hmm. No. Nothing to see on the end of the pipe that the attacker held. Either he wore gloves, or he cleaned the pipe. Aha! That's the bullet the doctor removed from the Baroness's corpse. The doctor removed this bullet from the Baroness's heart. According to Legrand, it's from a 7.65 mm Luger cartridge. The bullet resembles the one that the doctor removed from the Baroness's corpse, but I can't be certain until I check it under the microscope in Legrand's cabin. A masterpiece. Forensic teams use kits like these. They're placing increasing importance on the preservation of evidence. But not in Switzerland yet. It's a small lab used to conduct simple analysis on site. All right, what have we got here? Half of the tools in this box will be interesting for an archaeologist as well. Actually, forensics and archaeology are really quite similar to each other. The goal is to find out what happened, whether a few hours ago or a few centuries ago. Good Lord. Good Lord. 
What's this? Oh, how practical. A hermetically sealed cotton swab for collecting samples. I'll take it. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Fingerprints are overrated. Smart thieves wear gloves, or they make sure that there are too many fingerprints at the crime scene to check them all. For forensics in the woods or the open country, I suppose. No use on a ship. I'm sure Lagrand could work magic in this alchemist's lab. Me, I'm just awestruck. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Aha! This is some kind of inventory list. For each chemical, it lists the chemical composition and a short comment on how to use it. And here's a list of the most important procedures. Fingerprints, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gunshot residue, blood. I don't have to analyze the pillow and feathers to determine whether there's gunshot residue. I can smell it. And I don't have any other clues at the moment. Good Lord. A microscope. Looks like the one that Lutz Reichinger uses in his pharmacy. Just more modern. Okay. All right. That's the proof. Whoever shot the Baroness also fired the shot in the cargo hold. What could that mean? Another alarm. It was tripped at some point, but there's no way to determine when. Lagrand must have taken them yesterday at the crime scene. Shot in her sleep. She didn't feel a thing. She went to sleep and never woke up. This photo provides an overview of the crime scene. A rough diagram of the ship. Lagrand marked the Baroness's cabin. Seems like he didn't turn up anything else of note. Yes, that's how we found her yesterday, I think. I wasn't really myself at the time. Hmm, yes. The bed, the blood spot. The spot on the sheet is much bigger than the one on the mattress. There's blood on the blanket as well. A lot of blood, I'd say. The blanket and the sheet are gone. I guess they're in the medical center. Hmm, no. Nothing suspicious. <laughs> hmm. Smells like chemicals. Lagrand probably developed the photos in here. There are still fragments of the syringe that the inspector broke in the sink. Why is he pushing himself like this? Even if he catches the raven, is it worth ruining his career and his health?
always wanted to do that. That should be enough. Wasn't there something about blood samples? Fingerprints, mm hmm, mm. gunshot residue, blood. Hmm. Well, it explains how to confirm that something is blood. That's a start. You have to mix luminol and a hydrogen peroxide solution and then drip or spray the mixture on the blood. The solution turns blue and glows even if there's just a very small amount of blood. Okay then. Luminol and hydrogen peroxide. Aha! Luminol! And there's the hydrogen peroxide. I'll mix it with the luminol in the bowl. Okay. I can detect blood with this mixture. The clear solution turns blue if it comes into contact with blood. Okay, I'm filling the pipette and putting it down very carefully. So, let's see what we have here. No blood. Not the slightest reaction. If I didn't make a mistake, and it wasn't that difficult, then the spot on the Baroness's bed isn't really blood. But if it isn't blood, what is it? And more importantly, why didn't Dr. Gebhardt notice anything? He was supposed to have examined everything. Hmm. I'd say it's time to visit the medical center. It seems impossible that Dr. Gebhardt could have shot the Baroness. He was with me when the gunshot ran out. But he must have noticed that the Baroness was lying in a pool of fake blood. Maybe he's covering for someone. Let's find out. It's probably for emergencies, in case a passenger falls down and can't walk anymore. Possibly due to rough seas, or maybe the captain's well-stocked bar. The sink looks like it's been cleaned recently. I can't say whether it was cleaned to comply with the hygiene regulations, or whether there was another reason. A tape recorder from Seibling. Interesting. The reel in the Baroness's cabin is from the same company. Hmm. A microphone was plugged into the tape recorder. Maybe Dr. Gebhardt records the results of his examinations and writes them down later. I guess the trash bin is in here. Right. Paper towels, plastic packaging, cartons, and... Hold on. Oh. 
What's this? A burst rubber glove. It's knotted, and there's a red liquid all over the inside that looks like blood. I bet good money that it's the same fake blood I found in the Baroness's cabin. Dr. Gebhardt will have trouble explaining how rubber gloves full of fake blood got into his trash bin. First, the fake blood he missed in the Baroness's cabin, and now this. It doesn't look good for you, Doctor. That's proof enough for me that the Doctor is involved in this. I should report to Legrand. Interesting. A tape on a reel. The reel belongs to a much better player, like the one from the Baroness's cabin. I can't be certain that this is the reel that was missing from the Baroness's cabin, but it seems quite likely. The player is rather basic. Simple, sturdy, practical. The player is rather basic. Okay. Hmm. Nothing. Strange. There. Very interesting. A shot is audible on the tape, and the reel comes from the Baroness's cabin. It's all coming into focus. Time to pay Legrand a visit. <gasps> no! No, don't, don't, I... Are bound 
it in my bag, just in case. You are supposed to be asleep. I am not a monster, you know? I, I have nothing against you. Nothing at all. But what can I do? You forced my hand. It's your fault. Yours alone. Keep talking. have to snoop around. Why did you have to snoop around? And that club there, you want to plant evidence on me, yeah? I left no evidence, there is no trail, and yet you can't just leave me in peace, can you? Thanks. A wet towel works miracles. I told you so. Out with it then. What were you doing down there? Inspector, at least let the constable recover his breath. He almost killed himself. Me? No. Dr. Gebhardt would have taken care of that for me. Where is he? Gebhardt is vanished without a trace. We're searching the ship from top to bottom. One at a time. Tell me, Zelna. What did you find out? Dr. Gebhardt killed Baroness von Trebitz. Impossible! Do you have proof? Besides the fact that he wanted to kill me? But wasn't the doctor with you when the shot was fired? The shot that we heard was a recording. The Baroness had a tape recorder and good speakers in her cabin. Good enough to make the noise audible on the upper deck. Is that just your suspicion? Or do you have proof? There's an audio tape in the medical center. The reel belongs to the tape player in the Baroness's cabin. And there's a Seibling reel in her cabin that belongs to the recorder in the medical center. <sighs> he recorded it in the cargo hold. His tape recorder has a microphone. And I removed a bullet from one of the boxes down there. And it came from the murder weapon? All right. Inspector Legrand! 
Let's pretend you're onto something. The shot we heard was just a recording. What happened next? We all ran to the Baroness's cabin. She lay comatose in a pool of blood. Dr. Gebhardt pushed past you so that you couldn't get too close to the Baroness. He examined her and pronounced her dead. There was no reason for us to doubt him. The shot, the blood, the Baroness lying there lifelessly. But she was only unconscious. Knocked out by the chloral hydrate that the doctor had poured into her glass shortly before. The doctor had a glass in his hand when you came in. He wanted to remove the evidence, but you gave me the glass instead, Captain De Conti, and unintentionally knocked me out as well. Nonsense. There was blood everywhere. And the Baroness is certainly dead enough, isn't she? Then who did shoot her? And when? As I already said, it was Dr. Gebhardt. He shot the sleeping Baroness in her cabin, barely 10 meters away from us. What are you saying? The doctor was alone in the cabin for a while. When the alarm went off, it was deafening. I couldn't even hear myself. And I found a pillow with burn marks. Could have been used to muffle a gunshot. And the blood? The blood wasn't real. Dr. Gebhardt mixed up a liquid that looked like fresh blood to the casual observer, but the liquid remained red instead of becoming darker and browner from exposure to the air. That meant he had to clean the body and get rid of the bedding. But the blood was already there when we first entered the cabin. Dr. Gebhardt was in the Baroness's cabin before the murder. He hid a surgical glove full of the red liquid under her sheet. The Baroness, dead tired, fell onto her bed. The glove burst, and the blood spread across the bed. I found the burst glove in the medical center. But why did he do it? What was his motive? Uh, Inspector? I can only speculate. The Baroness spent the day rummaging through her old family photos. No, no, no. Do you have anything to contribute, Constable? Uh, uh confession, sir. Dr. Gebhardt was the raven. It's all here. He admits to everything. What does it say? It says, do you still remember, my dear Nico? The streets were wet with rain, and the scent of roasted barley and fermenting yeast wafted over to us from the brewery. The dog barked until your shot struck down the innocent one. After that silence, not a single sound, except for my soft steps fading on the wet cobblestone street. They made a hero of you, and I at last found peace. At least until the urge returned. Some of us are not made for retirement, my friend. I thought they would assign this case to you. And that thought pleased me. We'd finally find out who was truly the better man. And it pains me now to have to admit that you and your little gumshoe got the better of me. You drove me into a corner. Forced me to make mistakes. I congratulate you on your triumph. But no one will confine the raven to a cage. There is but one way out, and that is by my own hand. Farewell, Raven Hunter R. Inspector Legrand. Inspector? I was right. I told them all, over and over again. But no one would listen. You think that Dr. Gebhardt was really the raven? The things Gebhardt describes in his letter aren't part of any police report. Only someone who was there would know them. Couldn't there have been others involved? Uh, one of the police, for instance. What if one of them changed sides? Why is it so hard for you to accept the simple truth? There was never a new raven. There was only ever the old one. And that was Dr. Gebhardt. The modus operandi doesn't match. The raven was not a killer. 
Legends are rarely what they seem to be, Constable Zellner. Then who was the man who was killed back then? William Jackson, a petty thief. Committed some burglaries together with his brother. Talented, but not world class. And they thought he was the Raven. Some people thought it was part of his disguise. If you're a debonair master thief, what better disguise than pretending to be a common crook? From time to time you let them catch you pulling small jobs, and no one ever imagines you're capable of a major heist. But you didn't believe it. I had my doubts. But everyone congratulated me, and those doubts were pushed aside. It was like being caught in a storm. But eventually the storm passed, and my doubts were still there. But not this time? No doubts telling you that Geb Hart isn't our man? It must be him. What about the handwriting, the wording? Does the farewell letter match the Raven's other letters? Yes, it's his handwriting, his words. I've read all the Raven's letters, all of them, over and over again. I never thought it was possible. A resurrected Raven. The Raven was never dead. I shot the wrong man. But that man had the stolen goods, didn't he? So he must have been in league with the Raven. One could hardly call him innocent. Where do we go from here? We deliver the eye and then our contact Perry. A task force will compare all of Gephardt's known residences with the Raven's activity. And if there are any inconsistencies? You're welcome to keep an eye on the safe if you can't let it go. The ship will remain in Cairo for one day. That's all the time you'll have to catch your own Raven. I already have mine. Ah, you're one of Legrand's men, aren't you? My name is Anton Jakob Zellner. You've come just in time. Grace, my dachshund is missing. Uh, there may be more important matters for me to attend to, Mr... Director Abbas Mohtar. And Grace isn't just a common dog. She's a purebred German dachshund, a champion. So... The exhibition will still open tonight. But of course. Everything has been arranged. The final preparations are almost complete. But one of the two exhibits won't be there. A terrible loss. A tragedy. That irreplaceable Egyptian cultural treasure has been stolen for the second time. The second time? What? Did you really believe that the eye of the Sphinx was found lying on the banks of the Thames? Inspector Legrand, Professor Lucien, and Constable Oliver are overseeing the transportation of the safe. They should be here at any moment. I'll have a look around in the meantime. Do you think that's necessary? The Raven is dead, after all. If you mean Dr. Gebhardt, his body was never recovered. Nor the stolen eye of the Sphinx, for that matter. It does us a great honor that the Inspector is concerned about us. But we have everything under control. Legrand isn't as concerned as he should be. But I am. Is the museum closed? Yes. Only carefully selected guests may enter the museum during preparations for the gala. And of course, you're one of them, Mr. Uh, Constable. What can you tell me about the museum's security system? One of the best on the market, and the second eye, will still be exhibited in our special treasure chamber, which is extra secure. Treasure chamber? See for yourself, to the right of the entrance. The eye is as safe as the British crown jewels. I think I'll have a look around the museum. Please do. There's a lot to see, and you let me know if you see Grace, won't you? I hope we find her before the great inspector arrives. Isn't it fantastic how he solved the murder on the ship? 
Le Grand? Of course. It's in all the newspapers. The murder of the wealthy Baroness von Trebitz, and how the great Inspector Le Grand identified the murderer in just one day. It's the stuff legends are made of. You should count yourself lucky to have the chance to learn from him. What... what exactly do the newspapers say? Everything. It's fantastic. Someone on board must have informed the press immediately. Of course, it's a great advertising for us. The reporters will queue up tonight. And it was reported that Legrand found the murderer. Of course. Who else? Well, I wasn't exactly uninvolved. Of course. Legrand surely has assistance. But honor to he who deserves to be honored. Right? Well then. Be seeing you, Constable. Grace. Here, Gracie. Uh, my sweetheart, uh, where are you? Oh, uh, Mr. Inch. Mr. Inch, there you are. I am so sorry. Baroness von Trebitz was a good-hearted woman. She did so much for the museum. As you say, sir. And you? Are you leaving so soon? I'd like to go back to my hotel. These last days have been such a strain. First, you sneak into the museum without greeting me, and then you want to leave just as quickly? I didn't want to disturb you, and we'll have time enough tonight. Yes, you simply must come tonight. I wanted to present Baroness von Trebitz with a medal. Now you'll have to accept it. Of course, if you insist, sir. The Baroness paid for all this. Without her, there wouldn't have been an exhibition or a gala. She was very generous. Yes, she was. I if you'll excuse me now. Constable Zellner, I want to thank you again for all you've done. You saved me, you could say. My pleasure. See you tonight. Locked. The door is closed if the guard room isn't occupied. That makes sense. Though I would have expected the guard room to be occupied all the time, especially on a day like today. Miss Miller. I'm glad to see you here. Oh, Constable Zellner. I heard what happened to you on board. Awful. Truly awful. All's well that ends well. You are waiting for Professor Lucien? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, you'll be sailing down the Nile, if I heard correctly. That's right. I'm sure it will be an amazing experience. But you don't seem to be very excited. Oh, but I am. It's very generous of Lady Westmacott to invite me, and especially Maddie. He'll learn a lot. But? Well, Professor Lucian offered to join us. Then Matt will learn even more. And I'm sure it won't be unpleasant for you, either. No, I... I just don't know how Maddie would react if Edgar came with us. I understand. I could test the water to see how he'd feel about it. Would you do that? Oh, thank you, Constable Zellner. Were you able to find out why Professor Lucien left the forecastle so suddenly last night? No, not really. We only had a brief conversation. He was still very nervous. He was like that on the train as well. Seems to be typical of him. It must be something to do with the burglary at the museum. It really affected him. But he told me not to worry about anything. He said, soon this would all be over. Really? How did he mean that? Oh, I... I didn't ask him, Constable. Are there other passengers from the ship here? Oh, yes, we arrived as a group. David Kreutzer, the violinist, was with us. So were Miss Myers and Mr. Inch. He seems to have gotten over the death of the Baroness pretty quickly. He seems positively relaxed. I've met him. He looks on the bright side of life, so to speak. 
Where is Mr. Kreutzer? He's over in the treasure chamber. Maddie is downstairs in the main hall. I'm afraid I'll hear the sound of something priceless shattering any second. Matt will be careful, Miss Miller. I'll continue my tour of the museum. Oh, yes, there's so much to see. Ancient Egyptian jewelry. I like that golden signet ring with a scarab made of jasper. In ancient Egypt, these beetles were regarded as symbols of fertility. Nowadays, we just call them dung beetles. I suppose the beetles don't really care. I can't read what it says, but the cover features a dashing picture of Legrand. It shows an energetic young man photographed from beneath, against the sky. That's the look of a man who can catch a thief and murderer in a single day. Hmm. Well-trained guards are usually the best security system, although they didn't manage to stop the Raven in London. The gala will be crawling with guards tonight. The local police might also send some reinforcements. That must be the treasure chamber where the Eye of the Sphinx is due to be exhibited. The display case is already prepared. heard of this. Desert glass. In the great sand sea of the Libyan desert, there's a region where natural glass is found. Nobody knows how it formed. The valuable material was often used for jewelry in ancient Egypt. Several daggers in a row. The shapes and patterns look timeless, elegant. What does it say here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The dagger on the left is a replica of the dagger from the tomb of Tutankhamun. It must have been incredibly precious during his lifetime because it's made of iron. Thousands of years before the Ice Age, meteorites were the only source of pure iron. So a star that fell from the sky, bringing a substance that's harder than anything they'd known before, would have been a dramatic event. No wonder they used it to forge a weapon for the godlike Pharaoh. This is Akhenaten. The only pharaoh whose portrait I always recognize. He has a very unusual head. Akhenaten was the husband of Nefertiti and the father of Tutankhamen, a famous family. But he went down in history as the pharaoh who wanted to eliminate the old gods and replace them with a single god. The priests took offense and he died of unknown causes. A figure of Imhotep, who comes in peace from around 2700 BC. The first polymath known by name, godfather of medicine, architect of the first pyramids, and according to legend, the inventor of Egyptian writing. He certainly achieved more than me in his life. Hmm, 
Aha! This shows how the ancient Egyptians were able to move the heavy blocks of stone to build their pyramids and temples. They used ropes, wooden sleds, and poles as levers. These exhibits aren't originals, of course. They're reconstructed, based on old pictures. Nonetheless, it's impressive how they managed to build monuments like the pyramids with such simple tools. He was a legend. The Greeks called him a god. The Romans still honored him 3,000 years after his death. Even today, scholars offer a drop of ink to Imhotep when they begin a new project. Really impressive. Impressive, isn't it? Thousands of years old and still beautiful. That it is. They dug it out of the sand near Thebes over 50 years ago. I was there. Really? I met my husband there. He was an assistant on the dig and was ordered by the director of the excavation to take care of that writer. I financed many excavations in the following years, here in Egypt and in the Near East. I visited my husband together with our son. It was the best time of my life. But a museum is no place for nostalgia. What can I do for you? You've had a long and successful life, Lady Westmacott. What's that supposed to mean, Mr. Zellner? That I should be ready to leave the stage? Because I'm not. Oh, I didn't want... I'm here because life is here, Constable. Or was. I have never lived as much as I have here. No fame, no money can buy that. I understand. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. Such an outburst isn't fitting for a woman of my age, and an English woman at that. Let's talk about something else. Your son. You haven't said much about him. Or perhaps you did, just not by name. You're an attentive listener, Mr. Zellner. I was wondering why you knew so much about Miss Miller's unhappy marriage. I stopped paying his bar tabs. Stopped paying reporters to hush things up. He got to know her and went with her to America to start a new life. You can change your name easily, but not who you really are. He has my eyes, doesn't he? The part two novel is for him, isn't it? If I couldn't provide Matthew with a good father, then at least I can provide him with a good start in life. When I was working on the ship, I felt like one of the detectives in your novels. You were lucky. It was an unusual murder. Most murders happen in the heat of the moment or are committed by idiots. They're uninspired. But Gebhardt thought it through. He could have succeeded. Hmm. I don't know. He made too many mistakes. He couldn't have known that the Baroness, almost unconscious from the drugs, would lock her cabin door. But that was a risk. The plan was too complicated and sloppily executed. You certainly are a harsh critic, Mr. Zellner. He could have shot her on the side deck and thrown the weapon into the sea. With no witnesses, no one would have suspected him. How boring. Or if it had to be a complicated plan, then he should have worked more carefully. Should have thought of everything, had a plan B in place. Maybe he didn't have enough time. He had only a few hours to plan and commit the murder. Still, he should have covered his tracks more carefully. The audio tape, the bloody glove, none of that should have stayed in the medical center. Do you think that Dr. Gebhardt was the raven? Was? Do you think he's dead? The letter sounded like he committed suicide. There's your answer. Does that sound like the raven? Being unmasked? Taking the easy way out? My sentiments exactly. The raven wouldn't commit murder, get caught, and then jump into the sea. You don't want everything to be over, do you? It's my chance to do something great. It can't be over yet. At least you solved the murder of the Baroness. You're a hero. That's not how the newspapers see it. Nor I. Something's missing. I can achieve more. 
Careful, Constable. He who flies too close to the sun... Is that the myth of Icarus? To be honest, no. The story is Greek, and was only written down a thousand years later. I was counting on the dramatic effect. Oh, worked well enough. Let's assume that the thief is still out there. Who is he? If all this were a novel, then it would be the one you least expect. Is that intended to be a confession, Lady Westmacott? What do we know about the new raven? He's a man who would stop at nothing. Must it be a man? And how do we know that it's just one person? There could be several people collectively pretending to be the raven. So, we don't know anything. That's not completely true. We know that he or she wants the Eye of the Sphinx, and will probably strike here, assuming he or she hasn't already gone. It may be the end of the story for me, Lady Westmacott. Inspector Legrand will arrive soon and send me to the hotel. I return tonight for the gala, hoping all the while that the Raven does dare to attempt a burglary. Tomorrow morning, I'll have to return to Switzerland. What an unsatisfactory ending that would be. It wouldn't be a triumphant ending, but it could be worse. At least you'd still be alive, Constable. Will you attend the gala tonight, Lady Westmacott? But of course. The antiquities, the delightful atmosphere. And who knows, perhaps there will be another spectacular burglary. And your cruise? The ship doesn't leave until tomorrow. And believe me, I'd cancel the cruise for this. As always, it was an entertaining and enlightening chat, Lady Westmacott. I'm going to miss our little chats, Constable Zellner. Goodbye. Ahoy, Matt. The statue was talking. The statue was talking? Yes. And what did it say? It said it was... That's a very bad word. I know. And an English one. Don't you think it's odd that an old Egyptian statue speaks English? Don't you think it's odd that a statue speaks at all? That would have been my next question. And, uh, is the statue talking to you right now? Do you think I'm nuts? No, of course not. I just thought you might have much better ears than me. Ears that can hear statues. Some cop you are, Mr. Zellner. This is a mystery and you're just making jokes. You're right. It's just... Don't you believe me? Hmm. We both agree that a stone statue without a mouth or vocal cords cannot speak, right? Hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay. That means you heard something else. And we have to find out what or who it was. Roger. I'm almost a bit envious of you. Going up the Nile on a ship, it must be great. Yeah. I guess. You don't sound so keen. I think my mom wants the professor to come too. And you don't? You can't tell me. What if mom marries the professor and doesn't work with the lady anymore? We'd have to move to London. 
and I'd have to go to a new school. You could tell your mother that it's not okay with you. She'd never do anything against your will, would she? Hmm, I guess you're right. If I'm stubborn enough, she'll definitely send the professor packing. Thanks! This will all be over soon. <laughs> then I'll finally have time for you. I, uh... We wanted to head back to the hotel. Certainly. And tonight at the gala, I'll show you around the museum, okay? And... Have you made up your mind about the cruise? Well... Well... I don't really know. I only see you on vacation, Mom. And now you want the professor to come too? So I'll see you even less? You're right. I'm sorry, Professor Lucian. I think it's best if you don't join us. But Mary... Professor, are you coming? Maybe we can talk about this again tonight. Should we go back to the hotel? I want ice cream. Actually, Mr. Zellner still owes me some. Moment, Professor Lucio, your key, please. Uh, yes, well. Come on, Professor. But you have to realize that... Uh... Thank you. Finally! But, but... Ahem. Professor? I, uh... I wanted to give you this. <gasps> I... Well... After the burglary in London, I thought the eye might not be safe on its way to Egypt. So I secretly took it when I was supposed to place it in the safe in London. How dare you? I felt that I should leave the jewel to someone I trusted completely. Myself. But the jewel was safe. From London to here, no one had an opportunity to steal it. I beg your pardon, my dear colleague. But if that were true, I wouldn't have had it. Congratulations, Professor Lucien. You fooled everyone, it seems. The honor is yours. That's that. Shall I explain the security system to you, Inspector? The French ambassador summoned me. I have to get in touch with him. The press is besieging the embassy, and I have to answer their questions. But you absolutely must come tonight. The opening of the exhibition will be the highlight of the year, and you are my special guest. I will see what I can do. Zellner, will you have a look at the security precautions? We'll see each other tonight. Of course, but... Wait, Inspector. I'll join you. Well, here we are. The Inspector will answer the reporter's questions for the next few hours. And I... Well... I won't take up too much of your time. I'll take a look around and then go lie down so that I'm ready for tonight. What's in the other display cases? Other valuable originals. The eyes of the Sphinx would have been the highlights of our exhibition. Now that we only have one left, it doesn't really outshine the other valuables anymore. This room is full of world-class treasures. How is the display case protected? 
It's made of bulletproof glass that's several centimeters thick. You'd need heavy machinery to open it. But even the smallest disturbance of the display case will set off the alarm. Hmm, doesn't look half bad. A glass cutter wouldn't be much use. Is the display case anchored to the floor? Why do you ask? The Raven once stole a whole display case in St. Petersburg instead of just taking the jewels out of it. Such an attempt would fail here. The display case is bolted to the floor and weighs several hundred kilograms. Many people picture a stone coffin when they hear the word sarcophagus, but this one is wooden. As usual, an ornamental representation of the deceased is painted on the outside in gold and other colors. What's that? A camera? The latest model. It's called video surveillance. I've heard about that. The images are recorded and can be viewed again later. That's right. Images from all three cameras are recorded in the card room. Wow. As I've said, we've spared no effort and no expense. This here, the gate, how does it work? If the alarm is set off, the metal gate descends. The same thing happens at the windows and the main entrance. The thief is trapped like a rat. As are we. Hmm. Next, I'll uh, show you our guard room, the heart of the whole security system. And after that, I'll have to excuse myself. Alert the guards. Then call the French Embassy. Le Grand needs to come. <laughs> Have a seat and try to calm down. Director Mohta? Director, how can I open the metal gate? He shouldn't have done that. Director! All the artifacts in the treasure chamber! He destroyed them! And I will bring him to justice, but first I have to get inside. He's pale and shaking, probably in shock. Perhaps I'll get something out of him in a couple of minutes. That bloody bomber. I mean, the chamber was filled with irreplaceable treasures. The gate is massive. I can't open it myself. The gate is massive. I can't open it myself. He's pale and shaking, probably in shock. Perhaps I'll get something out of him in a couple of minutes.
Constable Oliver. Don't move. What did you do? I didn't do anything. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna arrest you. Put the pistol away. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Robert, be sensible. Shut it. Is... is he dead? Just unconscious. Perhaps he can tell us who knocked him out. Excellent. Don't act all innocent. It was you. I was in the treasure chamber with the director. You, on the other hand, had every opportunity to take the guard out. I found him unconscious. I wanted to open the gates. And make it easier for the raven to escape? That does it. On the floor. Hands behind your head. Why aren't you in the embassy with Inspector Legrand talking to the press? What are you talking about? Legrand refused to do it. What? He told the ambassador that he'd rather walk through the desert for 40 years than give interviews for 40 minutes. We have to open the treasure chamber's gate. I suspect there's a secret entrance. No. We should open the main entrance and call for help. Robert, think. The raven is inside the museum and so are we. We could catch him, but we have to give chase immediately. The two of us can finish it here and now. You... You just want to confuse me. Robert, I don't think you knocked this man out, but neither did I. I was with the director the entire time. Ask him. That doesn't mean you aren't involved somehow. You could be working with the Raven. So could you. We can suspect each other, open the exits, and offer the Raven every possible escape route. Or we can bring him to justice right here, right now. Oh, OK. But just get this straight. I don't trust you. I'll keep an eye on you, and if you try to get away... Understood. I'll try to open the gate to the treasure chamber now. I'd appreciate it if you'd refrain from accidentally shooting me. No trick, Zelna. And if we don't find anything in the treasure chamber, we'll open the gate at the main entrance and call Inspector Legrand. Of course. What are you doing? I was looking for this. Hmm. Maybe someone stirred something into the coffee and poisoned him with it. But the bump on the back of his head would indicate otherwise. Dead. A monitor, probably for viewing the security cameras. There are five buttons down here, three of them labeled. Camera one, camera two, camera three. This should be the one in the treasure chamber. As I expected, it didn't survive the explosion. Locked. Guards usually have more keys, but I doubt they need that many if they just sit in the guard room all day. Hmm. Blueprints for the museum. Every gate seems to be controlled by its own switch. This should be the gate for the treasure chamber. Hmm, that's it. There's nothing more I can do here. All right, how do I... Fantastic. That's me, with the director. Now it's getting exciting. What on earth? You damaged it. No, I didn't. Someone must have turned the camera off. Or... No, it's still recording, but something's covering the lens. There. 
That was the explosion. Hmm. Interesting. Why is it interesting? Someone was in the treasure chamber, and they disabled the camera. And? And, just a few minutes later, the alarm went off and everything blew up. The burglar hardly had time to prepare a targeted explosion, right? Ah. One more reason to go and see what happened in the treasure chamber. Where do you think you're going? I'm searching for a way into the treasure chamber, which is exactly what you should be doing. I'll give you five minutes, then we'll follow my plan. Open the main entrance and call for backup. Let's hope for both our sakes that I find a way into the treasure chamber before then. I don't want to be responsible for the escape of the Raven. Director Mokhtar, I can't open the gate. Is there another way into the treasure chamber? No. Only one way. Only one. The director won't help me. Whether I want to or not, I have to stick with the constable. The director... Do you have any idea how we can open the gate? We've got to open the main gate and call for backup. No. You gave me five minutes and my time isn't up yet. The clock is ticking. Sooner or later the constable will lose his patience and I'll lose my chance to get into the treasure chamber alone. If you would be so kind. Uh, uh, no, that won't work. I could have told you that. The explosion wasn't strong enough to seriously damage the gate, but maybe it's a bit warped. At any rate, it won't open. The explosion wasn't strong, but maybe... This security gate is also closed. Once the alarm went off, no one could have left through the official exits. Locked. It fits. Constable? It's moving. Uh, uh, no, not quite there yet. That might help. All right. It has to work. Constable Oliver, could you lend me a hand? On three. One, two, three! 
Director Mokhtar, hurry! Put something under the gate! Huh? Director! No luck. It won't open any further. Put it down, quick! That'll, uh, that'll hold it. I wouldn't bet on it. We should hurry. And inform Inspector Legrand. First, I'll get an overview of the situation. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to leave you all alone with a jewel, do you? I doubt that the jewel is still in the treasure chamber. But how? I... I'll be watching you. Then you'll have to come with me. If you haven't heard anything from me in five minutes, me, not Constable Zellner, then open the entrance and call for help. Understood? Okay. The remains of the cordon. Give me some light. Mm. The clasps aren't really made for heavy weights, but I think they're strong enough. Hmm. You don't want to go down there, do you? That's how the eye left the treasure chamber. Oh no, uh-uh, no way. We've seen enough. The raven is gone. We need to get Legrand. You happy now? You could say that. Will you give me some light? I suppose the camera was hit by a chunk of flying debris. Fortunately, the ceiling is quite high, and the gate was still ajar. Otherwise, nothing in this room would have survived the shockwave. It will take a long time to clean and restore everything, and some things are surely lost forever. Come on, I can't see. There's the display case. Is the jewel still in it? I can't tell. Hello? I hope you don't expect anyone to answer you. Let's hope that at least some of the artifacts withstood the explosion. Why didn't he just drive through the wall with a tank? Reckless ignoramus. What do you think about this? Oh, it's a right mess. You can say that again. Would you give me your flashlight? You can't seriously expect me to say yes. No, not really. So at least give me a bit of light. This explosion was much more intense than the one in London, wasn't it? You can say that again. Imagine what would have happened if the bomb had gone off tonight. He didn't risk it. We must have made him nervous. <laughs> he couldn't have chosen a better time. Legrand isn't here. There are only a couple of guards and almost no witnesses. Still, I would have thought he'd wait. Remember the train? Our opponent has a penchant for drama. He's vain and wants as much publicity as possible. Uh, even vain people don't want to go to jail. True enough. It seems like the question of backup has been settled. We can't open the door from the inside. The director will surely contact Legrand. He'll be outside the door with a full squad in no time. I wouldn't bet on it. The thief was in the guard room and knocked out the guard. What was he up to there? He didn't disable the alarm. 
Maybe the phone lines. Someone will notice the metal shutters on the windows. Sooner or later, sure. Until they do, we have time to solve the case. I let myself down into the hole with the rope. You can't be serious. This isn't a matter for discussion. I'm going down there. You can join me or stay here. But you, you don't know what or who is down there. That's why I want to go down there. Besides, maybe I'll find an escape route for us. Oh, all right then. Should, uh, should I hold the rope? Okay then. So what do we do now? I, uh, yes, thanks. I'm down. Give me some light, Robert. Shine the light over there, please. Mmm, a map of Cairo. It's covered with hundreds of small holes, and there are some pins on the floor. There's a date in the corner. 1940. Shine the light over there, please. Interesting. Documents, maps, letters, all of them at least 20, 30 years old. I wonder how the Raven knew about the secret basement. He must have done some research and then paid someone for the missing information. I'm going to examine the display case now. As I expected... Empty? Yes. The display case didn't survive the fall. The thief just had to pluck the jewel out. Actually, I thought the display case would survive the fall more or less unscathed. And three of the four windows did survive. Hmm. What's that? Hey, don't go too far away. Come down and stop me, or stay there and give me some light. Interesting. Some kind of wooden hatch. There are two hinges on this side. There's a kind of metal hook holding the hatch closed. I am the talking statue. I really like to teach bad words to the little boys. At least that riddle is solved now. Peepholes. And I suspect... Yes. Mm. The raven couldn't have gone this way. We'd have seen him and he couldn't have closed the bolt from outside. There must be another entrance. Why is it suddenly so bright down there? I found the light switch. There are cracks in the wall and scarf marks on the floor. A secret door? And probably the Raven's escape route. Can you open it? There are several panels and a kind of a handle, but I can't turn or pull or push it. Something's written here, but it's too dark. Hurry down with the light. No, the Raven is trapped. We should call the ground.
I need the lamp right now. Uh, I don't know. It'd be better if we call for backup first. Do you think the Raven is waiting for us? If we don't catch him now, we probably never will. It's been a few minutes since the explosion. He's probably over the hills and far away. Robert, this is our moment. Time to show them all. When the others arrive, they'll see that we didn't just dare to enter the basement. No, we also found an escape route and opened it. How do you think that will sound on the police report? Constable Oliver and Constable Zellner laid the foundation for the arrest of the Raven with competence and quick thinking. Oh, that would be great, but uh, no, we really should wait for Legrand. Oh... Damn it, Robert, I can't see what's written on the wall. I need the flashlight, now! I order you to hand me the flashlight immediately. You can't order me to do anything. What would Nicholas Legrand do in this situation? Would he wait for backup and twiddle his thumbs, or would he act? Oh, blast. Come on, Robert. Small decisions can have major effects. You hand me the light, and we could both be heroes. Or dead. Robert, I'll be careful. We're lucky we're still alive, and I don't want to push my luck. The light stays with me. Oh. Damn it, Robert, I can't see what's written on the wall. I need the flashlight, now! Do you think this door leads to a dead end? With every minute we hesitate, the Raven's trail is getting colder. But, uh, we should take it one step at a time. We're alone, and the Raven is dangerous. What would Nicholas Legrand do in this situation? Would he wait for backup and twiddle his thumbs, or would he act? Oh, blast. We can't rely on the others, Robert. You and I, we'll catch the Raven. I might have believed you once. He's too smart for us, Zelna. He's better than us. You have to accept that. Should we just give up? Come on, Robert. You can't be serious. Okay, here's what we do. I'll hand you the lamp, and you open the door. Then we guard the door and wait for backup. I couldn't have put it better myself. All right. Catch! But hurry, I don't want to think about the fact that I'm standing here in the dark, surrounded by mummies. That's better. That is interesting. Four discs. Hmm. An extravagant combination lock. If it was just another language with a Latin alphabet, I might be able to guess the meaning, but I'm lost when it comes to Arabic. I'll write them down. It could be a hint about how to open the door. Thank you. 
Zelma, is that you? It is I, the Raven. Did you find an exit? Uh, no, I'm still looking. The basement is quite large. Okay, okay, don't go too far away. Various containers. Maybe they contained funerary objects. The lids depict animals and a person. That alone doesn't really help me. Various containers. Maybe they contained funerary objects. The museum still has plenty to offer, despite the senseless destruction in the treasure chamber. What are you doing here? You are just... I found another exit. The eye? Gone. The raven blasted a hole in the floor of the treasure chamber. There's a hidden basement beneath it. And... and the other treasures? It doesn't look good. Oh... oh no. Director Mokhtar? Isn't it about time to open the gates? I don't believe that the police have arrived yet. We can't risk giving the Raven a means of escape. That monster is surely long gone by now. Perhaps not. I have a lead. Do your best. As soon as the police have surrounded the building, I'll open the gates. Very well, Director. The basement below the treasure chamber, did you know about it? I had no idea. There are maps and drawings from the Second World War in the room. Why? Well, it may have had something to do with the resistance. Resistance? Egypt was occupied by the British. There was a movement for independence. The Egyptians collaborated with the Nazis? No, but the enemy of my enemy. So, the rebels reported information to the Nazis. And for that, they needed secret command posts. Yes. And what would be of more symbolic importance than the Egyptian Museum, witness to 5,000 years of Egyptian independence? Hidden rooms? Secret basements? What are they doing here? The museum was built in 1900 by a Frenchman who had a penchant for such things. Mystical torchlight ceremonies celebrating the builders of old? Freemasons? Things like that? Many great buildings have complicated histories. And today we're going to write a new chapter. I found this Arabic writing. What does it mean? It says... The sons of Horus. And that means... Is this really the time to discuss history? It's important. Ah. The sons of Horus played an important part in the burial ritual. Four sons, four canopic jars. Vessels in which the liver, lungs, stomach and intestines of the body were stored. Are the four connected to symbols? A man, baboon, jackal and falcon. Look downstairs in the main hall. Sons of Horus. Vessels and intestines. Got it. It's going to be okay. Wait here. Where is the constable, anyway? He's guarding the treasure chamber. He... He told me to call for backup if he doesn't come back in about five minutes. 
and that I shouldn't trust you. If you count on the constable, you're backing the wrong horse. He's Le Grand, man. Did you ever think about the fact that he's the only one who was present at both burglaries? Oh. The explosion occurred a few minutes ago. I should hear sirens any moment. Once that happens, I won't be able to stop the constable and the director from opening the doors. Must be the canopic jars the director was talking about. One jar for each of the four sons of Horus. Here we have Duamutev, stomach. Here we have Duamutev, stomach. The sign says, Amset, liver. Hapi, lungs. Quebec Senuef, intestines. The four sons of Horus, Amset, Hapi, Duamutef, and Quebec Senuef, are children of the god Horus the Elder and the goddess Isis. They are believed to protect canopic jars, which contain the internal organs of people who were mummified in ancient Egypt. As stellar gods, they are associated with the four cardinal directions. For that reason, their names were written on the four corners of the coffins during the Middle Kingdom period. Aha! Uh -huh. Four sons, four cardinal directions. The museum still has plenty to offer, despite the senseless destruction in the treasure chamber. Sarcophagus from the Old Kingdom. Hmm. Unknown ruler. Here we go. On the front, you can see the tutelary deities Amset and Happy. At a later date, it became traditional to show all four sons of Horus on all four sides of the sarcophagus. Each son signified a cardinal direction. Happy, the north. Amset, the south. Quebec Senuef, the west. And Duamutef, the east. Thank you. 
There we go. He's up there, Robert. I know that. That may be. Go into the guardroom and open the gates. Tell the director. Zelna, don't do it. It's too dangerous. You can't stop me. Not anymore. 200 steps at least. And a ladder. I'm too old for this. Left over from the war. If I had to guess, and why not? So high above the city is the perfect place for a secret radio installation. Must be unbearably hot up here in the summer, but it's bearable at the moment. I'd better leave it off. It'd probably just stir up dust. The chair is the only object that's not covered with dust. It seems like someone sat on it recently. Handcuffs. Not what I expected. Was someone interrogated here? Huh? Huh? The raven, if I'm not mistaken. Why don't you step into the light? Mr. Inch. Amazing. Truly amazing. I thought young Legrand would be my most dangerous opponent, but it seems I should have had more respect for age. And the bomb on the train? Did you want to kill us all? I knew that Legrand would be hot on my heels after the heist in London. He's a dangerous man, Mr. Zellner. He almost caught me once. Is that a reason to resort to murder? It wasn't my only reason. An eye for an eye, Constable Zellner. What about the murder of the Baroness? Was that also your doing? The death of the Baroness was never part of the plan. Dr. Gebhardt had a score to settle with her and got in my way. You didn't care about the key to the safe? I never wanted to steal the eye out of the safe. I always intended to strike here, in the museum. What about Gebhardt's confession? A nice idea, don't you think? It keeps the inspector out of my hair, for a few more hours at least, until everything collapses like a house of cards. Why did you want to steal the second eye here? The eye was in the bank in Zurich for a long time, impossible to get at. Then the safe on the ship in Legrand's cabin, too complicated. I heard about the secret basement and found out how the security system worked. I would have preferred to save my performance for the gala this evening, but, well, events demanded a change of schedule. Not least because of you, my nosy friend. How did you do it? How did you plant the message on the safe in the train? How did you know that Gebhardt killed the Baroness? And the demolition charge below the treasure chamber? How... how did you manage it all? Even if your arm isn't lame? Oh, it is, believe me. I needed help, it's true. A messenger boy to replace my arms and legs. A messenger boy? Ah, Adil. This could be interesting. He's quite talented, but unreliable. He has a mind of his own, his own plans. Don't you, Adil? I never wanted blood to be shed, but it's time to make an exception. Hmm. He only forgot one thing. I keep things firmly in hand. Always. End of story. I told you not to get off. What if the train had gone without you? So, you're taking a job as a ship's doctor. 
I am excited, but nervous, too. <laughs> I'm not exactly a champion swimmer. <laughs> if you wind up in the water on board a ship, something's gone terribly wrong. that in the museum <clears throat> that didn't quite go according to plan did it and i hate it when things don't go according to plan <clears throat> you nearly killed them you let them catch you uh, it, it wasn't my fault scotland yard was there if i thought it was your fault you'd already be bobbing in the river thames with a bullet in your head <clears throat> someone tipped them off I don't know who, but I'm going to find out. Where is the jewel? Ah, marvelous. But it's just half the set, and stealing the second eye will be more difficult than I'd anticipated. Why are we meeting here and not in Venice like we planned? London drew more attention than planned. They put Legrand on the case. Nicholas Legrand? He's searching the train. Should, shouldn't we postpone the plan under these circumstances? On the contrary, I gave him an anonymous tip. A tip? I told him that the train will be robbed. You don't seriously suggest that we steal the jewel right under Legrand's nose? Of course, because I'm an idiot! Our best bet is still Cairo. Everything is prepared. Mr. X will provide us with everything we need. As planned, I'll go to Venice together with the Baroness and board the ship there. You'll do the same, but as surreptitiously as possible. All right. And under no circumstances can anyone be permitted to discover our relationship. Understood. And the rest of the plan is as before? We just have to get on board the ship. Then I'll get in the car and we'll meet in Venice. No. Legrand necessitates a change of plan. You'll go by train as well and place this envelope on the safe as soon as the train halts in the tunnel. I'll cause a blackout so that you can sneak past the guard. You won't believe who's guarding the safe. That blasted Bobby from London. If you have any trouble, cave his skull in. And Legrand? You take care of the letter. I'll take care of everything else. The most important thing is that no one recognizes you on the train. And that I don't get caught. What's the purpose of the letter? That's not your concern. I'd just like to know whether I'm risking my life for some game of yours, or whether it's worth it. Any one of my games would be worth your life. You just do what I tell you. Stick the letter on the door of the safe, or leave it on top of it. I don't care. But the letter has to be there as soon as Legrand shows up after the blackout to make sure everything is in order. Understood? Yes. What? Yes, understood. Hasn't the Baroness grown suspicious? She's wrapped up in a veil of alcohol, arrogance, and disinterest. Only flattery, gossip, and Belgian chocolate can penetrate it. Ideal conditions. I'll be glad to be rid of that old hag. She's my ticket to the most important museums in Europe. But these have been the longest six months of my life. How are the injured guards doing? How the devil should I know? You didn't need to do that. What? Save your bacon? I'd have made it out on my own. Oh yes, the poor security guard. It really wasn't necessary. I'm such a naughty boy. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. Oh please, please, don't be angry with me. I won't do it again. I don't know. We have the first eye, and we only just escaped. Tell me you're not suggesting that we should be satisfied with that. One eye alone is nothing more than an expensive bauble. But both eyes together are a legend. My 
my greatest triumph. Shouldn't I put the eye somewhere for safekeeping? Just in case Legrand searches our things. I'll hide the jewel in the Baroness's luggage. I already know where. Legrand won't dare search her belongings, and even then, he'll never be able to open the secret compartment. Okay, so we'll see each other in Venice. And not sooner. Here, take your travel documents. We may not have an opportunity to meet in Venice. Okay, fine. Huh, that's the first change of plan so far. Uh, whatever. Looks like I'll be going to Venice by train. Huh. A ticket for a trip on the MS Lydia from Venice to Cairo. Some banknotes and... A passport. Blank. No personal info, no picture. Inch has brilliant contacts in the underworld. He knows the best counterfeiters, technicians, pickpockets, and con men. He remains anonymous, though. Most of them don't even know they're working for him. Mr. X, his contact in Cairo, probably doesn't have a clue who he is. Inch loves the spotlight and has a flair for the dramatic. Why else would he call himself the Raven? I don't like having to risk my own neck as part of his drama. What's the point of leaving messages for his opponent? A handy Swiss army knife. A good friend gave it to me. My travel documents. I shouldn't have any trouble getting to Cairo now. Sometimes you can find useful things in a waste bin. But this one seems to have been emptied recently. The conductor from the train. He's keeping a watchful eye on his passengers and their luggage. The train's been held up, and he seems to want to prevent further delays. This is the saloon car, fully furnished with a bar and all the niceties. The ladies and gentlemen would have a fit if I just waltzed in there wearing these clothes. Some of the passengers got off the train to stretch their legs, but this man started his journey right here in Zurich. He waited a good 10 minutes for the train and began to get impatient. A leather bag like the ones used by country doctors for carrying their equipment. Hmm. If I swipe the bag, it'd cause confusion while people look for it, and I might be able to sneak onto the train. The only problem is, I can't take the bag with me. Not a chance. The doctor could easily spot me taking his bag. He'd sound the alarm, and our Swiss friend would have no choice but to arrest me. And then we'd have a real problem. Burglary in British Museum, one casualty, 5,000 pounds damage, culprit unknown. Return of the Raven? I'd have escaped anyway, but Inch just couldn't resist playing with dynamite. I hope the security guard recovers soon. The crate must have had bananas or something in it. It's empty now. It's built out of thin wooden boards. Probably didn't have to bear much weight. A handy Swiss army knife. A good friend gave it to me. Huh. I can probably pry the bottom boards off without too much effort. They're thin, and the nails are short. Perfect. It looks like a normal crate. It's now or never. Hey, 
you! Scrap! Uh, yes, sir. Let the games begin. Excuse me, gentlemen. No. Can't you see that I am talking to the constable? The train is leaving in a few minutes, sir. I have to ask you to board it now. We should get on. Perhaps we'll be able to continue our conversation during the trip. I won't stand in the way. <laughs> Where's my bag? Uh, you left it right there. I know that. I want to know where it is now. I, d I don't know. I I'll look for it right away. If you gentlemen would get on the train in the meantime... I will hold you and your employers liable for this. I'm sure he'll find the bag. Come on, Dr. Gebhardt. I will help you with your luggage. Fine. The conductor doesn't really seem to know where to search for the lost bag. Finding a particular piece of luggage at a railway station is like finding a needle in a haystack. You seem to be searching for something. Can I help? Go away. There's no money to be earned here. That's not what I mean. I just thought, if you're looking for a brown bag... Why? Did you steal one? If that were true, I wouldn't be offering to help you. I saw a little blonde boy take the bag. He ran off with it, over there. Really? Hmm. Thanks. Isn't that the bag? Where? Nothing personal. No! Oh, man! Have a look. The compartment is locked. Damn. I can't let the professor see me. I shadowed him for days in London. He might recognize me. Calm down, professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. Professor Lucien seems to travel light. The Baroness's luggage takes up half a freight car. I don't think that the suitcase or the bag contain anything that could help me out. I'd better leave as little evidence as possible. My god, I barely look like myself. The sink, the sink. No, that won't help me now. Professor Lucien hasn't slept a single night in the cabin yet. The towel is unused. Hmm. If I twisted it... Then I'd have a sort of rope. He doesn't give up easily. Professor Lucien is at the door. And he won't give up until he opens it. That means I need another way out of here. I'm not as good as the Raven at slipping into other roles. He's had decades to perfect it. Whatever. It'll be good enough for the people on the train. It was the only window that was open in the station. So it was a good way to get onto the train. And now, it might be my only way out. Hmm. The window to the right should be the Baroness's cabin, and the one on the left is the saloon car. The roof could be my escape route. Those are air ducts or something, but I can't reach them with my hands. 
who? There's nothing quite like traveling on a train. to put the envelope on is in the freight car. But I can't just walk in like a delivery man. It looks like a toolbox. Ugh. It's secured with a heavy padlock. I'm not bad at picking locks, but I don't have my equipment with me. And everything's rocking and moving in here. Given these conditions, it'd take a while to pick the lock. That makes it too risky. The safe is guarded by my old friend, the Bobby from London. Even he would be curious to see a conductor in the freight car. I should be able to move about freely in the train as long as I keep away from Professor Lucien. The other guests don't know me, and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone. Young man? Uh, yes, sir? Tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. A dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. Even pigs get to drink from the finest porcelain. If I mess with the doctor, I might blow my cover. So I'll have to grin and bear it and serve our esteemed passenger his coffee. A small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. If I mess with the doctor, I might blow my cover, so I'll have to grin and bear it and serve our esteemed passenger his coffee. A cup of coffee for the gentleman. Do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty, or our skin color, or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. Beer, wine, champagne, gin, brandy, and whiskey. <laughs> the richest snobs take the same medicine as the poorest slobs. Some people that need a drink to steady their nerves, doing what I'm doing, but not me. I want a clear head if I'm gonna get this envelope onto the safe. You can guess by looking at the conductor's keychain that it's been through a lot. I doubt there are many keys that have traveled as much as these. Let's see. It fits! Huh. A lot of odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Here we go. A small shaving mirror. The 
the old lady didn't get on in Zurich, and she doesn't look like someone from Nancy or Basel. I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. I've seen her someplace before. Maybe she used to be an actress, and I recognize her from photos. She has the confidence of someone who doesn't have to prove herself anymore. She's rich, that's for sure, but it's not just that. I know people like that always have to be doing something. They feel useless if they don't have anything to do. I feel sorry for them. The elderly woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. I think Professor Lucien is still in the hallway, trying to get into his cabin. I'd better wait until the coast is clear. The ventilation shaft supplies the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. I can't see anything but the rear of the car through the slots. And that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. If I have to. That should do it. It sticks. Okay. The candy is so sticky that it'll hold the mirror without any trouble. As I expected, it sticks. That's what I call DIY. The mirror is stuck to the top of the antenna which I can extend about 60 centimeters. There's the guard. The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. I could shimmy down the shaft and hit him on the head from behind. Uh-oh. Are you okay, Robert? Nothing to report, sir. At ease. Any suspicious passengers come aboard in Zurich, sir? Hmm. Not really. It could be anyone and no one. But we've received support from the Swiss police. A certain Constable Zellner. Oh? Very motivated. Might get on our nerves. That limits my options. I can't overpower two people. I don't think I'll be able to slip into the carriage unseen after all. Oh, there has to be a way. I have to keep Inch happy. How do I get you onto the safe? Or on top of it? The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. And Inch said something about a blackout and a tunnel. I could use the moments of confusion and darkness to toss the letter onto the safe. Might work as long as I manage to open the ventilation shaft and choose the right moment. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. The Grand has retired to a dark corner, and the Bobby is hiding behind some boxes. Le Grand obviously set a trap for the Raven. Unfortunately, the Raven knows. Is that what this is about? Does Inch just want to mock Le Grand? Pistol! 
You'll get it back in Venice. Frightening me like that. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past my window. Be off with you. Oh, man. Ah, I can use these. Phew, that was close. He left the lock open. How convenient. Let's see. A wrench. You don't say. This is too easy. A wrench from the toolbox should be useful. I could unscrew the screws, but I should only open the cover inside the tunnel. that on the floor. Yes, sir. That was close. If the second screw makes that much noise, it's over for me. No way. If the second nut also hits the floor, Legrand will know that I'm up here. My only option will be to jump from the train. They should have been able to open the door with pliers. I think the coast is clear. I assume Inch is also in the compartment. He'll probably find some excuse to sneak out to trigger the blackout and engage the emergency brakes. No idea how he expects to pull that off. He usually leaves me in the dark about such things. Even after months of partnership, he still doesn't trust me completely. Just a few more days, and I'll finally be rid of that creep. And until then, he has to burn in his own personal hell with the Baroness. A nice thought. Obviously, they managed to open the door. I wonder who or what the archaeologist thinks locked it. Did he connect it to the burglary in London? Uh, probably not. Professor Lucien is on his way to Cairo, just like the Baroness. They both know each other. She chairs the Friends of the British Museum Club. I hope he's too shaken up to leave his cabin until we reach Venice. Huh. Is this a Stradivarius or something like that? If it is, maybe I should take it with me during the blackout. With any luck, I'm going to be a happy family man soon, and I'll need a few francs, lira, or marks. The violinist was already on the train in Zurich. 
Handsome devil. I'm glad my girlfriend isn't here. She loves to make me jealous. And once I'm raging mad, she leans forward and whispers one of those phrases that only she can say. He seems to be worried about something. So much the better for me. If he's absorbed in his own problems, he won't be paying attention to anyone else and won't be able to offer good testimony to the police. Self-control. Side jobs always lead to complications. There are enough unknowns in our plan as it is. No need to add more. We're still in the Swiss Alps. We should reach the Italian border in half an hour. Some maps, info for travelers, some pictures, and the schedule, all neatly hung up with magnets. Huh? Uh, won't work. There's a lock at the bottom of the window. Climbing over the coal car is the only way to get into the driver's cab while the train is moving. I can't imagine Inch climbing over it to trigger a blackout up front. I bet he paid someone to do his dirty work. Inch almost never takes personal risks, and usually he tries to keep his hands clean. shows the different routes the Orient Express took in the course of its long history. It's larger than the other notices, and thus hung up with larger magnets. <laughs> I'll take one with me. Some of the photos are rather nice. Professional work. magnet isn't that big, but it's still strong. I better not talk to her. Her eyes are intelligent and observant. Something tells me I'd only make life difficult for myself if I try to pull the wool over her eyes. the magnet to the string. Done. me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah. What the dickens? It's... it's... A Away with it! Take cover!
What's the meaning of this? What do you want here? What was the point of the bomb? Isn't that obvious? I wanted to dispose of Legrand as spectacularly as possible. You almost disposed of me as well. Did I not tell you to deliver the letter and leave immediately? People could have died. But of course, that was the point of the bomb. I don't want to hurt anyone. You know that. And you know that I don't care what you want. Obey my orders and nothing will happen to you, and you'll soon be a rich man. I won't blindly obey orders anymore. I want to know what the plan is. You know as much as you need to know. We will steal the second eye in Cairo before the eyes of the world. The theft of the first eye got everyone's attention. Legrand's death would have increased the excitement immeasurably. But this will do just as well. We'll have a showdown instead. The Raven versus the Inspector. That should also electrify the press. Why are you doing this? I thought it was about the jewels. Why are we making life difficult for ourselves and attracting so much attention? It's about more than that. It's about performing on the greatest stage of all. About the end of a legend. You'll see when it's time for you to see. Until then, just do as I say. And what if I just leave? You knew who you were dealing with the whole time. I don't have time for your hypocrisy. You always knew who you were dealing with. If, for your peace of mind, you have to pretend to be innocent in this situation, so be it. But we both know that you begged me to let you in on the heist. And in this business, one must get one's hands dirty. But James! James! Where on earth are you? During the trip, we'll keep a low profile and steer clear of Legrand. I, uh, I lost the ticket and the fake passport. I swear, if my arm was still good enough to climb, I'd have disposed of you long ago. Ah, oh, well. I'd prefer that no one see you while you're on board. Smuggle yourself on board and stay under cover until Cairo. Okay. And no more games. Nothing that Legrand, the police, or anyone else could do to you compares to what I will do to you if you don't follow my plan. James! There you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? He thinks he knows me. He thinks I'm stupid and weak. I have him right where I want him. Here's a young thief who'll show an old timer how it's done. Even if it means a bit of solitary confinement. I'm lying on a pile of clothes. Eh, different fabrics. Some rougher, some softer. This one feels like a fine net. No, I don't think this will be much use. I hope the dock workers have left the cargo hold. I better just take a peek. Or at least I'd take a peek if it were possible to open it. Ugh. You probably have to pull a handle to unlock the trunk from the outside. No one thought about making it possible to open from the inside. Huh. Feels like metal. Angular. I think it's the trunk lock. You probably have to pull a handle to unlock the trunk from the outside. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Uh, ha! Knife! Ugh. There's the screwdriver. So... If I just turn this... Uh, aha! Oh, you're kidding me! Seems to be a strap for holding something on the shelf above the trunk. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't reach the clasp.
Oh, brilliant! Hopefully the clasp won't slip out of the box when I pull the strap. The pipe rolled up against the shelf, but it's still out of my reach. Ugh, I can't reach it. Hmm. All right, then. I'll just drive the blade through the end of the strap. Hmm. It's worth a try. Ta-da! Looks like I hit the jackpot on my first try. There's nothing more to be had. Uh, that should hold. Two metal pipes, stable, about 10 meters apart. My best chance. Steady as a rock. Elegance. Oh, great. Okay, I'll tie him up and then get out of here before they start looking for him. And I already have an idea where I can hide. I can't imagine that he'd just leave. Yeah, and without saying goodbye either. <gasps> no need to be frightened, young lady. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. This is hardly the time or the place. What happened on the train? Nothing, nothing bad. Everyone is fine. Inch is dangerous. I warned you. I know. That's why we're being careful. And you have a smart and handsome young thief at your side. And humble, too. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. What have I done to deserve luck like this? Inch bothers me. He's shown what he's capable of. What if he finds out about our plan? How would he? We're careful. He's more ruthless than we expected. The bomb on the train. I don't want to think about it. We need to make sure that we stay calm. You mean that I stay calm? I'm not worried about you. I know you. Shall we go over the plan one more time? Good idea. We know that Inch hid the first eye in the Baroness's luggage. I'll break into her cabin and replace the eye with a fake. Right. We'll steal the second eye in Cairo. And Inch will be caught in the act. <laughs> it's simple. The devil is in the detail. I have to get into the Baroness's cabin undetected, then find the secret hiding place, and I can't leave any evidence behind. Yes. And Inch said something about a combination. So the hiding place might be locked. One step at a time. 
I think I'll assess the situation first. And I think I'll make myself comfortable for a little while. So this is how married life will be. Works for me. Everything went according to plan in London? Except for the explosion, yes. The Bobby was right on time. Because he had a good tip-off. I had enough time to take the eye, but unfortunately there was no time to replace it with the fake. Where is it? A work of art. Almost as beautiful as the original. I can't tell the difference. Inch could. But if all goes to plan, you won't have a chance to take a closer look at the jewel until after the burglary at the Egyptian Museum. Will the Grand cause any trouble? Everything's still going according to plan. That means he's clever, but not clever enough. And the Bobby? Peasant's cunning, nothing more. He won't be able to solve the puzzle on his own. There's still Inch. He doesn't suspect anything. We laid the foundation well. I've been his assistant for months already. He doesn't trust me. But he thinks he can play me for a sucker. That's enough. Speaking of Inch, I saw him talking to you in Venice. What was it about? He was angry because his attack on the train failed and because I lost my ticket. How did you get on the ship? As a stowaway, locked in a cold, dark cargo hold. Poor boy. I'll go out now and lead the police and master thieves around by the nose. I can think of something else to do. I can't. The poster proudly announces the ship's first Atlantic crossing. The city of New York welcomes the MS Lydia. The silhouette of New York and of a ship, but not of this one. They probably use the same template for every ship. Looks pretty official with a coat of arms, flag, seal, and all the trappings. And the poster is clean as a whistle. Someone seems to cherish it. The silhouette of looks I'm sure I could help you if... Stand aside! If you told me what you're looking for. Were you just getting in my way? Now get out! I'll wait at the door, madam. Yes, yes! Oh, miss... Mayors, can I help you? No, I'm just having a look around the ship. Good day. Oh, that was close. Practicality was definitely placed ahead of design here. I guess the Lydia regularly docks at harbors that don't have their own gangways. And rather than make the passengers climb ladders, they opted for the less beautiful alternative. A deck chair in the sunshine on a cruise ship. I'd be a fool to miss out on that tomorrow, but I have to take care of my duties before I can relax in the sun. Ah, oh, lovely big towel. I hope tomorrow I'll have a chance to sunbathe and enjoy the rest of the trip. This should be the entrance to the cargo hold. Not really my concern. Boo, curling, shuffleboard, all the same to me. 
I'm not interested in any of that now. No idea what kind of flag this is, but the pole it's attached to could be very useful one day. It's about 80 centimeters long and looks quite stable. Yes, it's sturdy, but it's also too cumbersome to carry around. Two handsome sailors are standing at the table and studying a marine map. Good thing they're busy. I can have a look around without being disturbed. If someone leaves the bridge, I'll pretend to be stargazing. And if that doesn't work, I'll just turn on the charm. Hmm, a classic. The thief enters through the ventilation shaft. Can it really be that easy? No, it can't. The cover is screwed shut. No, there's no gap to put the pole in. I can't force the cover open. All the first class cabins have their own ventilation. The shaft might be my best point of entry, but unfortunately, the cover is screwed shut. No, there's no gap to put the pole in. I can't force the cover open. Hmm. I could tie the bath towel around the pole, put the pole across the ventilation shaft, and climb down with the help of the towel. Sounds like a plan. All the first class cabins have their but Bravo! Bravissimo! Fantastico! Ha ha! Would it be okay for you if I get some fresh air up on deck? Of course, my dear. Give my regards to the sea. Wooden salad tongs just small enough to carry around unseen. I'm not an expert, but I think that Mr. Kreutzer really is a very skilled violinist. At least, I liked it, and the captain was certainly smitten. Excuse me, gentlemen. She can't have meant you, Mr. Kreutzer. Why don't you just let me have a conversation with the young lady? I just wanted... Did you count the rings on your fingers, my dear? I think I'm going to stretch my legs. But, Mr. Kreutzer, please stay. You simply must tell me more about your wonderful violin. <sighs> if you insist. There seems to be tension between the violinist and the writer. I'd better not get involved.
a wonderful concert, wasn't it? I wouldn't have expected you to be a connoisseur of classical music. Because I'm American? Because you're young, and friendly, and radiant. Someone like you doesn't have to know a lot to get along well in life. Are you easily prejudiced at your age? In my long experience, there's often a core of truth at the center of every prejudice. Prejudice is the reason of fools. Was that written in a book you once read? Oh, I've read many books. Good books. But not my books, you mean to say. You're a writer? Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, Miss... Mayers. You know... I'm not planning on throwing myself at a man. I'm glad to hear it. You have to work. Earn your own money. Oh, I will. My grades are excellent, and I really want to study acting in New York. None of my books has ever been made into a good film. The stories were twisted, shortened, and simplified so that even the dimmest fellow could follow them. I want to do theater and travel. I speak three languages. That would be three more than most people your age can speak. Do what you have to do but stay away from bad men. Is this your first trip on the Lydia? That's quite enough. Life is too short for conversations like this. I do wish that rather delightful Swiss policeman had come along. I heard you had an interesting trip on the train. It was thrilling. I'm hoping for an encore, perhaps in Cairo. Mr. Kreutzer possesses impressive technique, don't you think? He certainly does. His numerous playmates in Austria can tell you more about it than I. You mean, Mr. Kreutzer is a womanizer? I'm not talking about cheap skirts. I'm talking about expensive clothes. A man like him needs funds to support his lifestyle. Just go over to him, my dear. Tell the maestro that your family is wealthy. You have everything he's looking for. Money and a pretty face. Hold your tongue. Mr. Kreutzer, Lady Westmuckle, please. Or did you have your eye on me, Mr. Kreutzer? Old, yes, but rich. Jezebel. Mr. Kreutzer, maestro. That's better, freeloader. You and Mr. Kreutzer, you seem to know each other. Not really, but I know his type. Parasites who cling to the rich and famous and suck them dry. The young, misunderstood painter. The innovative writer who writes books that no one wants to read. The musical talent that has to be supported. The ladies and gentlemen of high society let the others use them and call themselves patrons. Another word for fool. Didn't you finance archaeological excavations in the Near East and Egypt? For my husband, and I was there myself. I catalogued items for him, and I didn't show him off like a trophy at cocktail parties. But my son was one of them, the worst kind. The kind that sucks not only the money, but also the life right out of a person. May I take my leave? You may. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the A handsome man and a talented musician, but he doesn't seem very happy. Hello, Mr. Kreutzer. Do you want to have a go at me, like the old witch in there? I just wanted to talk to you. Now is not the best time. 
I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your music. And that Lady Westmacott did not have the right to speak to you like that. Really? How do you know? You don't know me. Then... did she have the right? No, she didn't. That cynical old witch enjoys exposing the weaknesses of others, although we all have them. She as well. She lusts for recognition and acts as though it weren't so disgraceful. She rejects prizes and awards with snide remarks, but she's angry when others receive them. She needs to know that she's better than others. You seem to know her quite well. I've only met her once or twice, but I know her son and some of her friends. One friend of hers supported me for a long time. No one is brave enough to say it to her face, but everyone hates her. Her or her success? You're so talented. Why aren't you performing on the world's great stages? Fate, perhaps. Or bad luck. My parents opened every door for me and my sister and expected corresponding careers. Overambitious parents who forced their children to play music? No, it wasn't like that. I loved it. I loved to play the violin. They didn't have to force me. I wanted to do it on my own. I thought I would achieve my goals if only I worked hard enough, but it was not to be. What happened? In a more dramatic story, I'd say that I broke my hand just before my big break, or that I was rejected because of my nationality or my name, or that I was brought down by a conspiracy. But nothing like that ever happened. I practiced like mad, got better and better, really good. But nothing happened. The right people never heard me. I was never in the right place at the right time. Can you imagine how it feels to always be on the cusp of a breakthrough? To be just one evening away from becoming an overnight sensation? To see how other, less talented violinists pass you by because you just aren't lucky enough? How terrible. For every star in the limelight, there are a dozen more that burn out unseen, fading month by month. I didn't want to be one of those people who waste their lives chasing dreams without realizing that they're unattainable. If I couldn't have the life that I always dreamt of, and that my family expected from me, then at least I could have the next best life. The next best life? Mansions, limousines, parties. Everything you could wish for. Though none of it belongs to me. The lady called you a freeloader. <laughs> An ugly word. But maybe not so far from the truth. I move with the rich and famous, and at first glance, I live exactly the life my father always wished for me. A carefree life, easy going. And I play the violin, which I always loved to do. But it's not really like that. It's empty. My life is just a shell. A show, and everyone knows it. I loved something once, and I burned for it. But now, the violin is just an accessory for practicing my real profession. And your family? How could I ever look them in the eyes? A failed violinist who gave up. What does the future hold for you? Isn't it obvious? My hands are starting to shake from alcohol. What will be left once I lose my good looks? I'll have nothing then. And so I'll put an end to it all. You can't say things like that. With my father's pistol, I always have it with me. It... It's gone! <laughs> Fate won't even grant me a quick death. Don't you think you can still make it? No. It's too late now. The real question is, did I give up too quickly back then? I don't know. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Kreutzer. Very fine handiwork. The model maker even wrote the name of the ship on the tiny life preservers. But the winter garden at the back of the saloon is missing. And the stern deck looks different. It was obviously made before the ship was remodeled. Maybe one of the crew whiled away the long nights at sea building the model. Only someone with a lot of time and a love of the original could build such a thing.
several journals and magazines. Huh, this looks pretty interesting. Art and culture today. Huh, there's something about the exhibition. Unique masterpieces exhibited for the first time together in their home country. Tireless efforts of Baroness von Trebitz. No time for reading. I have to find the secret compartment in the Baroness's cabin. The only regular event seems to be the nightly drink in the saloon. Judging from the rest of the entertainment program, it seems necessary. We briefly discussed whether we should try to steal the second eye here on the ship. The lack of escape routes and the 10 centimeter thick door to the safe settled the question. Come in. How can I help you, young lady? Are you the ship's doctor? Uh, yes, of course. You see, that's what I thought, because you've got a uniform and you work in the medical center. Well spotted, young lady. My name is Dr. Gebhardt. How can I help you? What are the other passengers like? Mm, listen, young lady, I, I do not really have time to chat right now. Today is my first day and it is going differently than I had expected. You do seem a little stressed. Maybe you should relax. Stress isn't good for you. <laughs> you... You're right. If there is nothing else I can help you with. But you weren't really helpful at all. Maybe I'll come back later. Bye now. He has the enviable talent of being able to sleep anywhere, anytime. He once fell asleep on a cable car and only woke up after he'd already gone up the mountain and back down again. I don't like wearing hats, but they do fit the role. And I have to admit that the day in London when we shopped for Patricia Mayers was a lot of fun. Normally, I don't carry so many things around, but it would have been suspicious if I'd come aboard with nothing but a rucksack whilst pretending to be the daughter of a wealthy family. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money isn't the most important thing in life. If all you've got is this penny, as well as family and friends, then you're a very rich girl, he said. I'll take it with me. It'll bring me luck. We booked this cabin because it's centrally located. Easy to duck in whenever we need to. Of course, the fact that it's a first-class cabin with a huge bathroom and shower had nothing to do with it. It happened pretty fast between us. It was magic when we first met. Birds of a feather flock together, and he can be very charming.
Hmm. I could jam the penny in and make a kind of improvised screwdriver. Why not? That's it. I just hope that this is the right shaft. Here goes nothing. Ah, Jakob Aust. I finally got you. I'll have them arrest you, and justice will be done. Can I be of assistance, madam? Yes! You can get out of the way. Shall I tidy up, madam? No! It's time to celebrate. Excellent. The coast is clear. It seems like she was searching for a specific photo, and that she actually found it. Jakob Aust. Now I've got you, she said. We got our hands on the list of passengers, but I don't recognize the name. The mannequin could probably wear my clothes. It'd disappear under the Baroness's clothes, though. Hundreds of black and white photos, many of them tinted, from the 20s and 30s, I guess. Oh, I don't have time to deal with them. No, Inch said he hid the eye in the Baroness's luggage, which makes sense. He can't be certain that he'll have the chance to hide it again when we arrive in Cairo. Far too many hiding places for a jewel. But Inch said something about a combination. That sounds like a little safe or a hidden compartment. And she wouldn't have something like that in her suitcase. As a child, I often stood in front of shop windows and tried to stand as still as the mannequins. But when I got bored, I claimed that one of the mannequins had blinked and declared myself the winner. Impressive for a quick drink on the go. Gin, whiskey, liqueur, sherry, vodka, brandy, and champagne. Every bottle is at least half empty. What's that? A small leather strap. Aha. Hmm. Nefertiti, Guernica, A.D. Buonarotti's Adam. This could be a memory aid for the Baroness. And it would explain how Inch discovered the combination. I'm going to copy the hints. Hmm. As I see it, I have to decipher these clues to find three of the symbols. Then I can guess the fourth. Well, Nefertiti was an Egyptian queen. The monogram and the two other clues aren't much help. To me, it looks like a combination lock. A good one, too. The door only opens when the right symbols are in place. There are outlines of animals. A dog, a cat, a bear, and a rooster, amongst others. Eight symbols per cylinder. That means more than 4,000 possible combinations. If only I knew three of the four symbols, I could easily guess the last. But whilst I don't know at least three of them, I can't go any further. If only... But whilst I don't... Hmm. 
Not even Adil would believe that this painting was an original. He was interested in art when we first met. But for him, it was always about the content, not the technique. I had my work cut out, teaching him to concentrate on the stroke, the material, and the signature of the artist. It's the only way to distinguish an original from a fake. I don't care who painted it as long as it speaks to me, he said. A perspective that, as an art thief, I can't share. But it's charming, nonetheless. I'm here to steal one of the most valuable jewels in the world. Not to swipe the contents of handbags. I'd prefer to lock the door. Someone could come in and catch me at any moment. But it's important not to leave a trace. Inch absolutely cannot find out about us. I must hurry. No. I'd better leave the cabin as I entered it. Somebody might see me if I go out through the door. What is going on here? I don't like that. Is someone else after the eye as well? But even if that is the case, what does the audio tape have to do with it? I can't let it get to me. I have a job to do. Maybe it was a steward who checked whether everything was ready for the Baroness's nightly rest. Whoever it was, I should leave as fast as possible before someone comes back. It seems like Dr. Gebhardt was able to wrestle himself away from his work, but he still doesn't seem to be very relaxed. Quite the opposite. And why won't he go to the saloon? Dr. Gebhardt! Getting some fresh air? Oh, you could say that. Do you know the Egyptian queen, Nefertiti? Uh, yes. There is a famous bust of her. Really? Tell me more. No, I, I am sorry. I, I do not have time for that. Does Guernica mean anything to you? Now listen, young lady, I do not know what they told you, but just because I am German, I am not responsible for the crimes of my government. Crimes? What are you talking about? <sighs> we obeyed orders, just like everybody else. Now leave me alone. Do you know what the monogram A.D. stands for? What? A capital A with a small D below it. Yes, I do. Will you leave me alone if I tell you what it means? You know. It is not just any monogram. It is the first. Albrecht Dürer, a German artist, signed all his works with it. He was the first artist to sign all of his work with a monogram. It was not common to do so before then. Are you sure? His wooden engravings were, and still are, printed billions of times in Germany. Billions of times? You're exaggerating. Not at all. His work appears on German marks. And what? That's enough. I told you what you wanted to know. Please, leave me alone now.
Lady Westmacott? Yes. I hear you're well versed in Egyptian history, Lady Westmacott. Can you tell me anything about Nefertiti? A queen. The main wife of Akhenaten. Did she have a favorite animal? What a strange question. I, um, just heard that they really adore cats in ancient Egypt. Well, that's true, but I don't know whether Nefertiti had any special affinity for animals. Does Guernica mean anything to you? Why are you asking me all these strange questions? I... I'm curious. <laughs> How shall I learn if I don't ask? Pick up a book. Are you interested in art? Not really. I'm more interested in real life, in people. So, you don't know Albrecht Dürer? Uh, just because I'm not interested in art doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. What can you tell me about him? Books, my dear, books. In them, you'll find the answers to all your questions, even the most foolish ones. I bet you don't know anything about him, and you just want to cover it up. Ah, you want to appeal to my honor. <laughs> Too obvious, I'm afraid. I saw a sign in Venice. It said, Buonarotti. Do you know what it means? I'm sorry, I don't speak Italian. May I take my leave? You may. The Baroness seems to have a reason to celebrate. She's downing one glass of champagne after another. The less I have to do with her, the better. Best if she doesn't even remember that I exist. Although, based on her alcohol consumption, I don't really think I have to worry about that. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. Hello, Captain DeCanti. Miss Mayers, how nice to see you. You look beautiful. We missed you at dinner. I was in my cabin. I, uh, I didn't feel very well. <laughs> oh, I hope you're feeling better. Lovely concert, wasn't it? You only heard the end. It was really wonderful. All the more curious that Lady Westmacott embarrassed Mr. Kreutzer like that, don't you think? I have no idea what got into her. They say she's a difficult person, but this... Maybe it's the privilege of famous people to be a bit strange from time to time. When I was still a young sailor, Enrico Caruso was a passenger on our ship. <laughs> and he... I think she's fascinating. She's achieved so much, and all by herself. Lady Westmacott? Oh, yes, that's true. The most successful writer in the world. Do you know any more about her? Everything. <laughs> I'm her biggest fan. What do you want to know? Where is she from? Who were her parents? Her father was a wealthy British salesman. Her mother died in childbirth. She had an outstanding education, but was a lonely child, they say. Her father was away on business most of the time. I know how she feels. For many years, my father's career was also more important than me. Don't say that, my child. Your father paid for the life you now live. Did Lady Westmacott's father marry again? Yes. A woman 15 years his junior. She didn't really care for the child. She was something of a high society lady. She made the headlines with her antics more often than the family would have liked. And her novels. How did she come to be a writer? In interviews, she always mentions her French tutor, who encouraged her to write when she was a child. After some poems and short stories, she began to write detective novels with great success. The rest is history. The experts are arguing whether she or Shakespeare has sold more books. Although she doesn't receive the same deference. That's true. But her books are much more innovative and extraordinary than people generally give her credit for. And what does an elderly lady like her want in Egypt? I couldn't really say. She was there many times with her husband, 
an archaeologist. He died a long time ago. I heard something about a reception at the Egyptian Museum? Yes, for the eyes of the Sphinx. Or rather, for the eye. But I don't think she'd go to Cairo just for that. She usually stays away from official events. Didn't participate in the literary scene either. Always stayed as far away as possible from high society. Probably because of her stepmother. Is it true that you're a war hero? Mm-hmm. In two world wars. That tells you how old I must be. <laughs> you're as old as you feel. Oh, God, I hope not. Aren't you feeling well? You shouldn't burden your pretty little head with the dark thoughts of an old man, my dear. If you don't feel well, maybe you should take it easy. I'm afraid if I take it easy, it'll kill me. <laughs> you seem to be a pessimist. Fatty liver, asthma, gallstones, jaundice, gout, shingles, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, circulatory trouble, knee problems, pulmonary embolism, gastritis, migraine, neuralgia, tinnitus, rheumatism, pleurisy, thrombosis, and constipation. Those are what's been diagnosed so far. My body is a curse. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Forgive an old man. I, I, I didn't mean to shock you. You're still the captain of this beautiful ship. Duh. They couldn't just get rid of me, so they stuck me somewhere where I can't make travel anymore. Don't say that. This ship runs fine without me. The crew knows what to do. They don't need me. They... They don't want me. Captain! It's... I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm burdening you with all of this. Forgive me, eh? I'd like to rest for a while. Soon enough, it'll be time to head back to the call face, eh? <laughs> Captain De Conti? Yes? Buena Roddy. That sounds Italian, doesn't it? Ha! You can say that again. Buonarroti is the name of the greatest artist of all time. Michelangelo Buonarroti. Who most people only know by his first name. Just imagine. One man, an Italian, achieves perfection in all three movements of graphic arts. His David is the most famous statue in the world. As an architect, he was a genius. He built parts of St. Peter's Basilica. And as a painter, Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The creation of Adam. The spark of life leaps from God to Adam. One of the most famous paintings in the world. Yes, it is. The Sistine Chapel, Apostolic Palace, Vatican City, I don't know any animals associated with them. Animals? Oh, it's a game I used to play. My father posed me a riddle, and I have to guess an animal. And Buona Rotis Adam was the hint? Hmm. Maybe he meant Rome. According to legend, the founders of the city, Romulus and Remus, were raised by a she-wolf. Hmm. No. That's too vague. Does Vatican City have an animal on its coat of arms? No. And the Pope? Every Pope has his own emblem. But the new one doesn't have an animal. You don't seem to like the new Pope. It's too early to say. But who's fit to hold a candle to John the 23rd? Il Papa Buono, as we used to call him. The good Pope. He just died recently. What was his heraldic animal? He was a lion. And so was his heraldic animal. For a Catholic, Buenarroti's Adam could be a mnemonic for the lion. Pope John XXIII was elected in the Sistine Chapel like every other pope. A work of art hints at a coat of arms with a lion on it. Hmm. Maybe. I'll make a note of lion.
Captain De Conti? Yes. Do you know Albrecht Dura? Yes, an artist. Not bad. But he has his weaknesses as well. For example? For one, he wasn't Italian. That's a pity. You can say that again. <laughs> At least he lived in Italy for a while. What else can you tell me about him? I once overheard an argument on board between a German and a Spaniard about who elevated the woodcut to an art form, Albrecht Dürer or Alberto Durero. Eventually, they realized they were talking about the same man. Ha! Albrecht Dura is called Alberto Durero in Spain? That's right. Don't ask me why. Guernica, does that mean anything to you? Not a harbor that I've ever docked at. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Do you know Nefertiti? Is she... a Greek queen? No. She... Oh, never mind. I'm gonna go have a look around. All right. magazine will help me with the symbols. Indeed. An article about the different works of art and how they survived the Second World War. And there's also a picture of the bust of Nefertiti. The unique Egyptian work of art was... 1913. Hmm. Hmm. Permission to export to Germany. Second World War safe at the Reich Bank, then a bunker, and then a salt mine. Prevented from shipping the bus to the United States, back in Berlin since 1956. Very glad, blah, blah, blah. Soon in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin, and hopefully someday in a reunified Berlin on the museum island. Okay, so the bust of Nefertiti is located in Berlin. And which animal is on the city's coat of arms? The Berlin Bear. I just need one more animal. Deal. In the shower. I found the secret compartment. Oh, brilliant. And the jewel? I'm working on it. A deal? Yes? I almost got caught in the Baroness's cabin. What happened? I don't know. A man came in and I just had time to hide under the bed. Maybe it was a steward who came to clean the cabin? And turn on a tape recorder in the cupboard? Huh. Maybe it was Inch. He wanted some music? There was nothing on the tape. It was playing, but I didn't hear anything. Something is rotten here. Don't bother your pretty little head about it. Swap the eye and hurry back. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't think your surprise will really surprise me. The secret compartment is secured with a combination lock. Is there any way in? Not without leaving evidence. I need the combination. <sighs> Are there any hints? A memory aid consisting of several works of art. There are animals on the lock. Hmm. The works of art might hint at specific animals. You don't say, genius. I've already got that far. About the combination. Yes. Alberto Durero. What about him? What's his most famous work? Uh, hard to say. He did a lot. He was a pioneer of woodcuts and printmaking. The Baroness left his monogram as a hint, not the name of one of his artworks. 
So there must be a painting that everyone associates with him. <sighs> Not to my knowledge. Although he did have a favorite motif. And that was? Uh, himself. He made quite a few self-portraits. That's it. The artist is the art. Sounds logical. His most famous self-portrait is in the Prado in Madrid. I saw it with my own eyes two years ago. Does Madrid have something like a heraldic animal? Sure, it's, it's a bear. It's on the coat of arms and all over the city. A bear again? Like in Berlin? Why not? The same numbers appear more than once on normal combination locks. Hmm, that's true. The bear then. That's it. Three animals are all I need. I can guess the fourth. But I could try to find the fourth symbol anyway, just to be sure. Guernica. Sounds Spanish, doesn't it? Yes, it's a city in the Basque region. Does it have a heraldic animal? Or maybe the region has one? I don't know. I've, I've never been there. I just know it because the city was bombed by the Nazis during the Spanish Civil War. Nazis? In the Spanish Civil War? Oh, not officially, of course. At the request of General Franco, his friends from Germany reduced a defenseless city to ashes and rubble. Picasso immortalized the bombing in his famous painting. Really? Is it on display in Spain? Silly. As long as Franco is in charge, he won't allow that. Where is it? Oh, no idea. Paris, maybe? Picasso lived there for a long time. Hmm. Maybe doesn't help me much. I've got the combination. At least, I think I have. Ha! That's my girl! I'm going to steal the eye now. When I come back, we can celebrate a little. Hooray! I'll be going. Don't waste all the hot water. Never. Lady Westmacott? Yes. It must be exciting to meet all the world's famous and powerful people. I stay away as far as possible from high society. Too shallow. Too boring. But some of them must be exciting. Have you ever met Picasso? <laughs> they told him he's a genius so often that he actually started to believe it himself. But his paintings are impressive. Uh, Guernica, for example. Well... It certainly is big. I have to give him that. Didn't he have to flee from Spain? Yes, from the fascists. But not just him. Many of his paintings as well. If I remember correctly, Guernica is currently on display in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He bequeathed it to a future Spanish Republic. And until then it stays in New York? Yes. It's been there for years now. Have you ever been to New York? For the love of God, what would I do there? We have the original York in England. That's quite enough for me. So, you don't know the heraldic animal of New York? No. Probably an eagle. It's all eagles over there. May I take my leave? You may. Okay, the coat of arms of New York City is on the poster. There's the obligatory eagle. That can't be it, since there's no eagle on the lock. But look here, how cute. There are two beavers posing on the New York City emblem. Guernica equals New York equals beaver. All four symbols decoded. Gosh, I'm good. Now, I need to get back to the Baroness's cabin. The jewel is waiting for me.
Baroness von Tribbets? Are you okay? Hello? Baroness? Hello? A deal. What happened? The Baroness. Blood everywhere. But who? I don't know. Inch? Th that doesn't make any sense. Don't move. Zelna, up here. We've got our shuttle. Who are you? I do nothing. Me crew. Sure you are. What are you doing here? Just fresh air. <sighs> sure. You just wanted to get a breath of fresh air. Zelna, look who we have here. Well, if that's not our shadow. And our stowaway. Were you recently traveling via trunk? I, uh, nothing. <laughs> he claims to be part of the crew. Just wanted to get some fresh air. Oh, sure. And you obviously didn't attack me either, did you? The Baroness won't open her door, sir. Understood. Take him to the detention cell, Robert. We'll talk later, my friend. What is? Did nothing. Inspector Legrand thinks otherwise. Move! But I have... Gunshot! I know that! Get moving! Into the cell! Ah! It wasn't my fault. What wasn't your fault? That you were walking around the ship? That you let them catch you? That you endangered the whole plan? That you endangered me? I didn't kill anyone. They arrested me purely by coincidence. They'll have to turn me loose in Cairo. I mean, someone was killed, weren't they? I heard a shot. Why won't you answer? I'm having a conversation that you cannot hear. W what happened last night? The Baroness was murdered. Did... did you? No. If it were up to me, she'd have had an accident in a couple of weeks. Instead, someone shot the old bat in the heart point blank. Well, are we calling it off? No. Mr. X is ready, and as her surviving representative, I should be able to move about freely in the museum. The old hag's death doesn't change anything. How did you get in here? I'm more than capable of finding the entrance to a cargo hold. Indeed, it was child's play. It's not as though I had to crawl through ventilation shafts or anything so gauche. So, what do we do now? I could escape, and... Swim to Cairo. So, I stay here and wait? They'll arrest you in Cairo and question you about the murder. Even if they don't throw you in jail, it'll take days. And if we find the murderer, then they'd have no reason to hold me. Oh, <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. Nervous? I would be if I were you. This Zelna chap wasn't part of the plan. I don't like it. He's groping about in the dark. Legrand is the real problem. Still, I'm going to take him out of the picture. How? Dr. Gebhardt killed the Baroness. 
A clever old man, but not clever enough to keep me from finding out. So you just have to tip Legrand off, and then I'm as good as free. That's what I thought at first, but then I thought, why waste the opportunity? I'd put Zelna on the trail of the good doctor. He'll drive Gebhardt into a corner, and when he lashes out in desperation, he might hit our Swiss friend. Maybe even Legrand, if we're really lucky. You can't do that. The old fella's just doing his job. And so am I. Inch, enough blood has been shed. Inch, no more deaths. Damn, I have to get out of here and warn Constable Zellner. I didn't sleep a wink last night. All I could think of was Alex. It's terrible not knowing what happened. I guess this cage is some kind of detention cell for the crew. It's not the most impregnable prison in the world, but it's still a problem. Huh. Lock looks pretty modern. Needs a small key, five pins. I could pick it with the right tools. It's a... It's a normal... Like everything else on this ship, the bars and hinges are showing their age, but they're still much too strong for me to kick the door open. Someone should move that board before the nail gets stepped on. The blanket got caught on the nail. A board and a nail. I doubt that will work. Yep, the nail is much too thick to fit in the keyhole. I think it's working. Huh, one down. I'll hang it back on the frame, and if I'm lucky, no one will notice my escape. Before I went to London to become Inch's protege, Alex and I drove through the French Riviera in this convertible. It was a wonderful week, and on the cliffs near Toulon, I asked her to marry me. Ah, but this is no time for reminiscing. There's nothing in the car that might help me. Alex is playing her role as Patricia Mayers, and she can't keep anything suspicious with her. Fire still poses a great threat to ships. There are fire alarms, extinguishers, and hoses everywhere nowadays. These hoses are pretty versatile. They'll do at a pinch if you can't smuggle climbing ropes into the building you're planning to rob. that up there a great sunlight shining through it and above it a bent pipe this could be my way out the bars are welded at four points and unfortunately they're not all as rusty as this one What's 
this? Whoa, heavy. Everything's a bit bigger and heavier on a ship, pulleys included. Huh, a ring set into the floor. You could attach ropes or chains to it. It's set into the floor to keep people from tripping over it. Not a chance. I have to come up with something, and fast. Dr. Gebhardt has the means to get rid of an old man inconspicuously. I attached the pulley to the ring. You could hang a car from it, if the ship were upside down. <laughs> I could do this all day. goes nothing. <laughs> Louder than I expected. I hope no one noticed. With luck, I'll be able to warn the others about the doctor before it's too late. No! Ugh! Hey, you, you all right? <sighs> that bastard didn't inject the fatal dose. You'll be back on your feet soon enough. <sighs> Better take it easy while I... Oh, no! I'll be right back. Where are you? No. He must be around here somewhere. Uh, no! Why? Can't you just leave me alone? Stay there. Just relax. Why can't you just leave me alone? It is always the same old story. What old stories? I am a decent man. Why are you torturing me? I just... I... I loved her. She betrayed me. 
It was her fault. I have blood on my hands because of her. Are you talking about the Baroness? She... She was her sister. I loved her. With all my heart. They were Jewish, you know? But I didn't care about that. I hid them when it became dangerous for them. I looked after them. I brought them food. I was a party member. And still, I hid her and her whole family. You risked your life for a woman you loved. And 30 years later, you murder her sister? I saw her swollen belly. I was so angry. He was one of them, you know? They just used me. I hid them, brought them food, and in return they laughed about me behind my back. What did you do? There are Jews hiding in the basement of the Waldhof. Armed Jews. We have to burn them out. <sighs> and that's what they did. Come down from there. Why? So you can kill me? I'm not gonna kill anyone. Or pack me off to an Egyptian prison? Or an Israeli prison? No. What do you expect? You had an entire family put to death. I am a gentleman. And I expect that others... That... That they... They, they don't... She didn't love you. And was expecting a child by another man. And that's why you betrayed her. It, it, it was her fault. She shouldn't have cheated on me. I, I, I saved her. I risked my life for her every day for, for four months. And then you threw it all away and became a murderer. I am not. I am. Yeah, well, the dead Baroness in the ship's hold proves the opposite. I had never met her. Back in East Prussia, she was the older sister, the smart sister. She studied art history in New York, tried to get her family out of East Prussia, but I was able to prevent that. You say you loved her, and yet you wanted to deny her and her family a safe life. They were safe. I protected them. It was for their sake that I joined the party. I had contacts. I wrapped them in my protective embrace. You didn't let her escape because you wanted to keep her close to you. She sent photos to her sister before the war. She must have recognized me yesterday in Venice. I certainly recognized her. The Baroness was searching through her photos. That's true. She couldn't get me during the war. And after the war, I disappeared, gave myself a new name, a new resume, a new life. And then, suddenly, there she was, about to ruin everything. So, she had to die. I didn't want that. But she gave me no choice. Why did she have to stir up old ghosts? All, all right now. No, it ends here and now. Why do you want to kill yourself? Isn't it obvious? He can't bear his false, hollow life anymore. Who are you? What do you want? A man who understands etiquette and honor and yet is nothing but a coward himself. Who, because of wounded vanity, burdens himself with immense guilt. Don't come any closer. The Baroness held a mirror up to you, didn't she, Doctor? And you hated what you saw there. So you smashed the mirror. But the sins of the past are catching up with you now, aren't they? No. A skull with empty eyes full of fear. Stop it. Oh, dear. You really know how to dampen the mood. I almost had him. And you? Aren't you supposed to follow orders? Are you not here to assist me? I won't. That wasn't a question. I don't want any dead bodies. The same old story. You want success, but you don't want to get your hands dirty. Isn't the Raven famous for that? I do what's necessary. No! No, no! What is it then? You wanted to jump anyway, or you should at least. Inch! I'm just lending a friendly hand. He's a coward. He needs a bit of motivation. Come on now, chop chop, jump! You are the Baroness's butler, aren't you? I... 
I did not want to kill your mistress. Oh, 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 nonsense. Forgiven and forgotten, if you don't mind my asking. There must be another solution. Why are you doing this? Nothing personal. Well, that's not entirely true. You're a miserable excuse for a human being, aren't you? But mainly, you're a means to an end. Your death will get Inspector Legrand off our backs. The Inspector? What do I have to do with him? Your letter. The one in which you confess to being the Raven and to killing the Baroness because she saw through your ruse. <laughs> That's absurd. Indeed it is. But people will believe almost anything if it suits them. The press will love it. Bold Inspector Legrand saves the day again. Interviews, medals, urgent telegrams from the capital. Our dear friend won't be able to escape the limelight. And by the time the commotion has ended, I'll be long gone. You can't kill him. Why not? He's a bastard, his death will help us, and he's a witness. If we let him go, we'll both go to jail. All the same, we're not gonna kill him. You got us into this situation. And as long as I'm alive, I won't let anyone be killed in my presence. No. I have to do the dirty work for you in the museum, so you won't be shooting me. Or him. Very well. You win. What? Oh, never speak to me like that again. Do you understand? I need you to steal the eye, but one day I could be overwhelmed by a feeling of hatred that will make me forget the eye. And there are worse things I could do than simply shoot you. I suggest you go back to your cell. You need to be fit for Cairo. I still have a confession to write. The last act. The end of the Raven. Part of me wants to abandon the whole plan and go back to Europe. What if something goes wrong and Legrand catches on? I couldn't bear it if something happened to her. I can't afford to slip up. Mr. Jamal, I'm glad you could make it. Let's get this over with. Still angry on account of the good doctor? You disgust me. You'll be rid of me in less than two hours, and I of you. What happens next? My diversion worked wonderfully. The press has laid siege to the French embassy, and Legrand won't be able to escape them. He should arrive in a few minutes with the safe, and then he'll have to answer ridiculous questions from reporters all afternoon. That's why we're striking now. A regrettable necessity. I would have preferred to make my grand entrance this evening at the gala. But yes, we will strike as soon as the safe is in the treasure chamber and Legrand has left. Have you already met your Mr. X? He's counting an envelope of unmarked bills as we speak. He put the blueprints under the statue of Imhotep. Blueprints? A sketch of the museum, not the kind you can get just anywhere. This one shows secret entrances, basements, and attic rooms that the Resistance used during the war. That's what it was about. Get the blueprints. There's a basement below the treasure chamber. The entrance should be marked on the blueprints. Open it and give me a sign. Will there be more deaths here in the museum? If you follow my instructions, no. If people are in danger, I'll call the whole thing off. I don't kill for fun, only when it's necessary. Is it ever really necessary? Sometimes. Revenge, for example, when one has been betrayed. What's the next step after the basement? You'll find out when it's time. But... <sighs> All right, then. I'll pay a visit to Imhotep, and we'll meet in the basement. Good monkey. Oh, and by the way, the museum is closed to visitors until tomorrow. Then how... You'll find a way. Yeah. 
I have to improvise if I want to get into the museum. Oh, nothing. I never imagined I'd be up to my elbows in garbage, and I still haven't found anything. Do I need an umbrella in Cairo? Or could it help me get into the museum? Hmm. A rod like that could be useful. I bet the craftsmen are nearby. If not in the museum, then somewhere around here. I bet the craftsmen are nearby. There's a tennis ball stuck on the tow hitch. Ah, people do that to protect the hitch and their trouser legs from the grease. I bet the craftsmen are nearby. Got it! I hope the owner doesn't come back while I'm tampering with the truck. Craftsmen aren't known for their calm, sympathetic natures. Ah! Uh, locked! Interesting. A fire ladder. Maybe I can get into the museum from the roof. Nope. The handbrake is on. I don't want to crawl through stinking sewers just to get into the museum. There must be another way. There's a metal grate over the drain to prevent people from tripping. I can't make out what's below. There's a metal grate. Hmm. Maybe I can fish something out of the sewer with the wire. Nothing. I can't even touch the bottom. It was worth a try. Who's a good dog? Yeah, who's a good dog then? Yes, that might be just the thing. You want it? Yeah, you like that, don't ya? <laughs> Good dog. <laughs> Good dog. The museum is closed today. Come back tomorrow. But there are visitors in the museum. Carefully selected by Director Mokhtar. Or they have an invitation. Is there any chance of getting such an invitation? For you? No. 
Can you please let me in? My ship sails tonight, and I can't leave Egypt without having seen a mummy. Get yourself a shovel and head for the desert. Maybe you'll get lucky. Never mind. See you later. Better luck next time, huh? <laughs> You're too kind. A true jack-of-all-trades. What's this? Wow, nice. I'm afraid the painter discarded the overalls because he didn't want to walk around in sweat-soaked clothes all day. Ugh, but what the heck. I have no choice. A handsome man always looks good, and the disguise works. <laughs> ah, that should do it. There's a small room down there. Should be the museum's treasure chamber if my sense of direction is right. Huh, cold. I'd be surprised if they needed to use it often in this climate. No sign of the Eye, or Legrand. Shouldn't be much longer before they arrive. No sign of the Eye, or Legrand. Next attempt. The museum is closed today. Come back tomorrow. Or are you one of the craftsmen? Of course I'm a craftsman. All right. Chamitz, chamitz, chamitz. Your company is not on the list. But it must be on the list. My boss told me everything was taken care of. And mine told me that nobody gets in if they're not on the list. Bye. Well, who wants to become an accomplice in a burglary? Yes, who wants to be an accomplice? What are you doing? Come here, you... <laughs> Stay away, you flea bag. Next time I'll wring your neck, even if it costs me my job.
You made yourself an enemy, pup. Stupid mutt! I'll get you this time! This little dog is crazy about the ball. Maybe I can somehow use that to my advantage. Stupid mutt! I'll get you this time! What the hell? This is my chance. Weren't you just here? I talked to my boss again. He said we must be on the list. Your boss can come and see for himself. There is no chamiz. Uh-huh. Mm. My co-worker's handwriting. I can hardly make out a single word. Chamiz, chamiz, chamiz. Ah, yes. Here. Here, put this on. Ah, many thanks. Uh. The author's companion. She seems to be waiting for something. Maybe she's waiting for the safe, too. Hmm. I wouldn't have thought she'd be so interested in the jewel. I better stay away from her. There's always a risk that someone observant might recognize me, and I bet that the lady is a very good observer. Imhotep. All right, I've got the blueprints. And since I'm a craftsman, it won't seem suspicious if I study them. Here's the treasure chamber. There's another room beneath it. And here's the entrance, somewhere near the statue. And there seems to be another entrance that... What are you doing there? Huh? Oh, it's you. What's going on? And what happened on the ship? Everything is all right. 
I was able to stop the doctor. What happened to him? Inch. You mean he... There was nothing I could do. And he won't even tell me his plan. I'm supposed to get these blueprints and open a secret entrance to the basement beneath the treasure chamber. A basement under the treasure chamber? I didn't know about that before. Inch somehow heard about it, and Mr. X took care of the rest. What's he planning? I don't know. I don't like it. Me neither. The blueprints show the basement below the treasure chamber, and two entrances. One of them is over there, but it seems to be closed. And the other? It's on the roof, and there are stairs from an attic down to the basement. And how are you supposed to get into the attic? Huh, <laughs> that's the question. There's a small triangle here on the roof with three numbers next to it. Three, six, and two. Some kind of code. I'll have a look around. It'll be okay. I wish I had your confidence. It's time for the grand finale. Don't you agree? Take care of yourself. You too. A plan always seems much easier when you're just talking about it, doesn't it? Yes, but not half as exciting. Okay, I have to open the door to the basement. Let's go. The secret entrance to the basement must be behind the statue. It's well disguised. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone undetected for decades. I can't see anything. No cracks, no handle. I won't be able to open the door from this side. I'll try to get in through the roof, then take the stairs to the basement and have a go from inside. I can't see anything. No cracks, no handle. Hmm. The secret passage is somewhere around here on the blueprints. Maybe this one. Very good. <laughs> there we go. The digits are written from right to left. In this part of the world, they read from right to left. I'm in the museum. Well, sort of. Old technical equipment. Inch said something about an underground that operated here in the museum during the war. The electrical cables don't seem like they were meant to be permanent. Probably, they secretly tapped the museum's electricity. That's tar paper, I think. Maybe it's for covering all those holes in the roof. According to the blueprints, the stairs lead from the attic down to the secret basement. Pitch black in here. Here we go. I think it's... nothing. A 
big heavy roll of rough tar paper, probably put there decades ago and then forgotten. Here we go. I think it's... nothing. The lamp was removed. You can still see the holes that the screws left. The cable was cleanly severed. Okay, plus and minus are exposed. I could connect the cables to each other, but I'd need to strip the insulation from the cables on the wall and the lamp. I should be able to remove the insulation with this knife. Okay, I'll twist the wires from the lamp cord together with the wires from the electrical cable. The lamp hangs from the electrical cable, which leads to the light switch. As long as there's a current, I should have a source of light now. Let there be light! Damn! I think the contact is dirty. I was right. The lower contact is coated with rust. The current can't flow properly, and sooner or later the bulb will burn out. <sighs> oh. A big heavy roll of rough tar paper, probably put there decades ago and then forgotten. Hmm, maybe I can... Yes, I can use it to rub the rust off. That should do it. One more try. There we go. If it wasn't so dusty, I could easily imagine someone had been using it. What kind of stories could this room tell? About desperation, anger, triumph? According to the blueprints, there's supposed to be a secret door here leading into the main hall. Huh. This must be the locking mechanism. Careful now. What the... What are you doing here? What if Inch sees you? No. I'm sorry. He... caught me. You and your little girlfriend. You thought you could go behind my back? Inch... No, you deserve to die, here and now. But then I wouldn't get the eye. Don't hurt her, please. We'll see. Get moving. Ah, ah, ah. <sighs> 
And now... Cover to the chair. No! Patricia! No! Oh, no! Enough! You have one and only one chance of getting out of this alive. Do what I tell you to do. Tie her to the chair. Please don't hurt her. I beg you. The handcuffs. Now. What's in the bag? We'll get to that. The handcuffs. Now. You can put the gun down. I won't try anything. I could choose to believe you, or I could keep the gun pointed at you and know that you won't try anything, if you'd be so kind. Please don't hurt her. I beg you. The handcuffs. Now. I'm sorry. Look at her. Remember this scene? If you try to screw me, then... What's the next step? What's the plan? Everything you need is in the bag. The eye will be delivered at any moment. You abseil from the roof into the treasure chamber. And the display case's alarm system? The alarm will go off, but I'll ensure that the only effect will be that the security barricades in the treasure chamber close. How will you manage that? Let me worry about that, just like the guards. You'll have several minutes to break into the display case and climb back to the roof. And once I have the jewel, what next? By the time I get back to the roof, the museum will be surrounded by policemen. Correct. Escaping from the museum is impossible. That means I stay inside the museum. There's a bag in the basement with food and water for you and your girlfriend. I'm sure you'll find a way to pass the time for a couple of days. The police will search the whole city for the eye, but not the museum. And once the museum's open to visitors again, Patricia and I will walk out through the secret door in the main hall to our freedom. I'll be watching you every step of the way. You'll deliver the jewel, and then we'll never see each other again. How am I supposed to break into the display case? It's protected by bulletproof glass. You'll find everything you need in the bag. A clever fellow like you will know what to do with it. If we do everything you ask, Will you let us go? I'm a poor loser, but a generous winner. How did you find out about our plan? By chance, I must admit. I hadn't anticipated it. I didn't think that you'd build up my trust for months just to betray me. You have to be patient if you want to steal the eyes of the Sphinx. A virtue youth normally lacks. It's a pity we have to go our separate ways after this little incident. I can hardly wait. Please, let Patricia go. You've got me. A fascinating young lady. Clever, skillful, beautiful. What's she doing with a chap like you? Are you sure you're not just a pawn in her game? Let her go. As soon as you bring me the second eye. The plan might work, I must admit. The plan will work. You'll see to that, or she'll suffer the consequences. Let's go. The clock is ticking. I have to take care of the guards and the alarm system. It'll all work out in the end. I know. Take care of yourself. If you should open this door without the Eye of the Sphinx in your bag, I'll shoot first and then ask what went wrong. You're not planning on letting us go, are you? I need a scapegoat. Otherwise, the traitor would already be dead. He doesn't understand because he doesn't think like you. You messed with the wrong man, and now you have to suffer the consequences.
climbing equipment, including a rope, a cloth bag. Huh? A pack of gum. Why did Inch put a pack of gum in a cloth bag? That's all. Climbing equipment and a pack of chewing gum. I'm beginning to feel under-equipped for this burglary. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to improvise. A good rope, and more than long enough to abseil down into the treasure chamber. This is the same climbing equipment that I wore for the burglary in London. Only the mask is missing. Does Inch want to make sure that the security cameras can see my handsome face? I'll leave it there until I need it. There's nothing else in the bag, and I don't need the bag itself. A pack of chewing gum. Huh, my favorite brand. Only one piece left. Hmm, what's this? Unless this is the most expensive chewing gum commercial ever, Inch wanted me to find the diamond. I'm sure it's not a reward for all my hard work. A crank. Something for opening windows that are too heavy to move with your hands. Your new home. That tarp is covering something. Huh. Bucket, rags, squeegee, tools of the trade for window washers. Probably didn't feel like carrying their equipment up to the roof every time, so they stashed it here. I don't need the squeegee. The bucket? Not really. This rag, on the other hand, I could wipe away fingerprints with it. see the treasure chamber. There are several people moving around down there. I think the eye is being delivered. This window can be opened. Must be an entrance for the window washers and maintenance crews when they have to work up here in the cupola. Huh. There's a mechanism that opens the window when you turn the crank. Huh. I see two contacts down there on the frame. There's a piece of metal stuck between them and fixed to the window. If I open the window, the piece of metal will move, breaking the circuit and setting off an alarm. Unless the guards have been notified beforehand, which is hardly an option in my case, I have to bypass the circuit. Huh. I can't cut any of the windows out of the frame, but this window has a rubber seal on the bottom and the sides. The roof of the museum is now officially drafty. Once the chewing gum loses its flavor, I can wrap it in this and throw it away. Yes, the aluminum foil might bypass the circuit. Ah, oh, that's darn tight. I can override the contacts with the strip, but I can't... Oh, oh, damn! I lost the strip. It would never have worked anyway. The gap was too small. Maybe the tap is meant to depressurize the water tank if it rains too much. Or it's just a practical way for the window washers to get some fresh water up here. A small rag, maybe for polishing windows? Oh, cold, dripping wet. I'm not putting it in my pocket like that. Okay, I'm in. And now, back 
and forth, and away we go. Got it. The wet rag is lying on the contact. Excellent. No alarm. Okay, I don't see anyone. Such an attempt would fail here. The display case is bolted to the floor and weighs several hundred kilograms. What's that? A camera? The latest model. It's called video surveillance. I've heard about that. The images are recorded and can be viewed again later. That's right. Images from all three cameras are recorded in the card room. Wow. As I've said, we've spared no effort and no expense. I think I've seen enough here. But I'm interested in something else. <sighs> the camera covers the whole room, and I don't have a mask. Just have to hope that Inch knocked out the guard in the guard room if not, he'll be on his way to check the camera soon. Here goes nothing. The camera is no longer a threat. Now or never. This cordon doesn't apply to burglars. As a visitor, I'd only have eyes for the jewel. As a burglar, though, I'm more interested in the bulletproof glass, about half an inch thick. There's no glass cutter that could do the job. All right, then. Bulletproof glass. How can I get past it? All right, then. Bulletproof glass. I'll press the diamond into the chewing gum with the tip towards the window. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. No, no! He wants to lock me in. But why? He doesn't have the jewel yet. What is he? Oh, no. Oliver, he's totally focused on the hole in the floor. This is the opposite of a clever burglary. Inch must have decided to do it the violent way as soon as he realized he couldn't count on me. I would have died in the explosion and been the scapegoat. 
As long as I'm quiet, he won't notice me. As long as I'm quiet. Everything's destroyed. Priceless works of art, centuries old. Nothing is sacred to Inch. He's up there, Robert. I know it. Maybe. Go to the guardroom and open the gates. Tell the director. Zelna, don't do it. It's too dangerous. I've got everything under control. Sorry, Constable. How did you do it? How did you plant the message on the safe in the train? How did you know that Gebhardt killed the Baroness and the demolition charge below the treasure chamber? How... how did you manage it all? Even if your arm isn't lame. Oh, it is, believe me. I needed help, it's true. A messenger boy to replace my arms and legs. A messenger boy? Ah, adieu. This could be interesting. He's quite talented, but unreliable. He has a mind of his own, his own plans. Don't you, Adil? I never wanted blood to be shed, but it's time to make an exception. Hmm. He only forgot one thing. I keep things firmly in hand. Always. End of story. No! Stupid little policeman. He shouldn't have messed with the raven. You aren't the raven! The raven would never have shot a defenseless old man! No, he wouldn't have. But now he has. At least that's what everyone will think. Why does that matter? Who are you? We worked for him, for the raven. My brother and I. He's responsible for my brother being shot and for my tripled arm. He sacrificed us. Who? Who is the Raven? I don't know. I never met him, and in all these years, I've never found him. You don't know who you worked for? No one knows who the Raven is. Some say he's dead. The fact is, he never returned to the stage after that fatal night in Paris. So you want to lure him out of hiding? And if anything can, it's the burglary of the century executed by another thief while using his name. Hmm. He doesn't come. But I still got my revenge. The gentleman thief, now a bomb-throwing murderer. Oh, I do hope he is still with us, watching helplessly as I ruin his life's work, as he ruined mine. Enough chatter. I'll be going. But, but why? Your little girlfriend escaped, and if I can't eliminate all the witnesses, I can at least destroy their credibility. Why did you just shoot poor Constable Zellner, lad? They'll hang you and your accomplice. Ha ha ha! You've met your match, Raven. You hear me? Wherever you are, I beat you. Good evening, Mr. Inch. The eyes of the Sphinx, if you would be so kind. You? That's impossible! The jewels, now! Inch, don't move a muscle. You're under arrest.
A master thief who stole two cheap fakes and then fell to his death. A shot that no one could explain. But for the newspapers, it was the real jewels that were the heart of the story. The eyes of the Sphinx, reunited in the Egyptian Museum. What kind of game is this? The Raven's Game. Uh, at least you caught him. Um, again. I saw the surprise and the anger in Inch's eyes. He knew he'd been played. You don't mean... At first they wanted us to believe that it was Gephardt. And now we're supposed to believe that it was Inch. He's still out there. So then, who is the Raven? Hello there, handsome devil. Hey there, pretty lady. Don't! My father will be here any moment. Did you tell him about our engagement? She did. I almost slipped out of character. Oh, Daddy. We all know that would never happen. You were Anton Jakob Zellner through and through, even with the world crashing down around you. Didn't go too badly, did it? Well, Inch nearly blew us up, and I was almost charged with murder. Ah, yes. Exciting, wasn't it? I haven't had fun like that since I retired. Dr. Gebhardt nearly killed you. Nobody could have suspected the doctor. At least we managed to clear things up quickly. I would have preferred it if things went according to the old plan. We would have swapped the jewel aboard the ship, and Alex wouldn't have been kidnapped by Inch. And I'd have preferred it if you hadn't given me a nasty bump on my noggin. And what would your excuse have been for staying on board if I hadn't? Hey, I improvised. Hmm. Good point. I was afraid Inch would realize you were wearing a bulletproof vest. He was too confident. After he foiled your plan, he thought he had everything under control. He never really took a look at the emerald in the display case. He just assumed that they shipped the real jewel from Switzerland. And after my little tussle with Inch, we had both jewels. He blew half the museum to smithereens just to steal a fake. He was always rude and insolent. I never should have worked with him. His double dealing cost his brother's life. And his own as well. I'd still rather see him in jail than in a morgue. He shouldn't have messed with the Raven. To your retirement. To the future. Finally. Dear Nico, the, the raven, raven is dead. Yet other criminals live and they are more brutal and ruthless than he ever was. Who will stop them? It would be tragic if a good policeman failed to do so because he was hunting for a dead man and ruining himself in the process. Let the dead rest in peace. They, they are, are not, not coming, coming back. Are.